Hey guys, brand new podcast, new studio. New studio, I hope you like it. I'm also going to change things up. I'm going to make these intros a little bit shorter. All I really need you to know is, know is that I have tour dates. But I want to take a second. The last time you're going to hear me say this, this is our new studio. We have built out this studio. I like the couches better. I like drinking. I like smoking weed. I like cigars. I like the hang. The table, I'm going to save that for two bears. The energy should be two bears. Birdcast should be its own thing. And so I hope you enjoy it. If you have any notes or if you have any artwork you want to send to me, send it to P.O. Box written right there, 707 North Hollywood, California, 91445. You can find it. Just go to just Google Burt Kreischer's P.O. Box. <clears throat> Tops off world tour this week. Cedar Rapids, Queen Bay, Minneapolis, Grand Forks. And then next week, Fargo, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Edmonton, Calgary, Kelowna, Bismarck, Sioux Falls, Oshkosh, Peoria, Rockford, Augusta, Tupelo, Boozer City, Jonesboro, Charleston, Lexington, Detroit, and then ending in Cleveland. And then, I guess technically not ending, we immediately go to Auckland, New Zealand on April 17th. We'll be in Auckland, New Zealand on the 17th, Te Aro, New Zealand on the 19th, Melbourne on the 21st, uh, Tornsville on the 23rd, Perth on the 25th, South Brisbane on the 28th, Sydney on the 29th, and that's it. And then maybe there'll be a summer tour. Maybe I'll call it Fully Loaded, and maybe I'll announce those dates next week. <laughs> and I'll announce the talent. You're going to fucking lose your mind. We have a great talent list for that and the cruise. Big, it's going to be a big, big year. My movie, The Machine, comes out Memorial Day weekend, only in theaters across the country. Secret time? I think the trailer comes out this week. If you guys see the trailer for The Machine, I'm not saying that. I, you didn't hear me say this. If you see the tra trailer for The Machine tomorrow, <laughs> please post it, share it, put it on your socials. Do whatever you can. I'd, lo I'd love to spread the word about this movie. I'd love to have a big opening week. I'd love to have, I'd love to have, a, I would love for everyone to enjoy this movie. I would love to, I, and I enjoy it. I'm very proud of it. Without further ado, they need no introduction. They're my friends from Legion of Skanks podcast, Louis J. Gomez, Dave Smith, and Big J. Oakerson. What? I can't, I can't because I have this chest infection. Those, those, I love those blunts. Uh, we it was from uh, from Europe. Uh, we went swimming like in Greece, lungs? and everyone, yeah. Like is pneumonia type shit. No, it's just and then uh, they fucking use smoke at the arenas, and I that shit fucks me up. Yeah. So you did a great job, Leanne. That's what I'm you did a great Thank job. You. You did a great <laughs> job. You did a great <laughs> job. <laughs> it really is beautiful. It's great. Thank you just killed it. Yeah, awesome. It really is. You did. You fucking killed it, Leanne. It's amazing, right? Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I'm yeah. so proud of myself. <laughs> I'm so proud of Jennifer and Allison work their asses off and Paula. We look fucking really great. Me, I'm impressed. I do not have What's that noise? We closed on this house October seventh. Wow. That's pretty that's pretty quick. It's pretty fast, right? There What's that noise? Because there's Cricket? a plug here that's not hot for some reason the electrician oh. is checking it out. Oh. Right now? Yeah, because you need it for two bears and the electrician. Okay. Is it cricket? No, it was not hot until just now. So since he's the guy who put it in. Not bad, huh? It's nice, my friend. Thank you. Just very excited. Halston, are you ready? Thank you guys for coming. We're oh, oh, we're first rolling first right now? How exciting. Yeah. You're the first guest in the new studio. Here, sit over there. Sit over there while, Jay, while we wait for Jay. Sit in that seat. Uh, you know, Lewis, and I, I said this, Jay's out smoking a cigarette. We're, we're recording now, but Lewis is the real inspiration behind this. It's like oh, you yeah. watched, Ro you, I watched also, Rogan do this. Here. I watched Rogan do this. Tell me Whitney Cummings giving out Kesha's phone number. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, Whitney just did a group text. to okay. and Kesha wrote back. And oh, my God, fun. And she goes, Kesha responds to me. Like, well, now I know that's Kesha. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, Have so much fun. Right now, Wendy's supposed Thank to do Skank Fest, but I don't know if I can announce her. Oh, um, her, 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 her reaction was, she goes, she's like, yeah, I'm doing Skank Fest for sure, 100%. And she was like, I'm going to have my people send you over a promo photo. And she's like, but can I do it like I did last year? Can I just like, you know, come in for whatever? And I was like, cool. And then her people sent me and they're like, all right, this photo is approved for promotion. But it's like two different things. She's telling me that she wants to just pop in, but yeah. also she's sending me promotional materials. So I'm going to just promote her. Yeah. And then worst case scenario, what's going to happen? She. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah. what we did with Bert last year. Too oh, late. 
Yeah. Well, and I, I, I remember. I, who did I have? Who did I have that backed out? Oh, uh, Tim Dillon. Uh, I, yeah, I can say this. Yeah. I don't care. I'm, Tim and Tim doesn't mind. Nobody cares. We had Tim for the cruise. And yeah. uh, like we had. And, <laughs> and, uh, I already know this. And, uh, and then he, we announced it because he was like, I'm in. I'm 100% in. He tells me. And so we talk, do it. We do it. Uh, something's burning. And we announce it. And everyone's like, oh, fuck. Tim Dillon's there. And then Tim, the last day we're about, we're about to announce the cruise, he goes, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, he called our agent and he goes, I told Bert, yes, you tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so I was like, I totally get I that's the weird thing about I hang on. I have to say this. I keep trying to pay this compliment to you. I, I've and you know I've said it and you've heard it. You really are an, an inspirational dude, Lewis. Like you really are. The way you run business, the way you run comedy, I mean, this group right here. With an iron fist. It is. <laughs> it's, it's insane because he's so stupid, but he's inspired everything I've done with my life. Lewis is the reason I do stand up and the reason I do podcasting. He can me to do for both overachieving. Do you know? You realize? You realize how on paper bad this was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, and then when you when I when I break <laughs> each of you down, like obviously Jay's like everyone's best friend. Lewis is fucking. Got the Rogan vibe. You are, Dave, you're one of the fucking funnest guys to listen to on a fucking podcast oh, because you know so much shit. I, and I remember the day I found out you were like smart. <laughs> I was I was in a, I was in a sauna listening to you on Rogan. Too. I remember that day I you were smart. <laughs> for, for Jay, it was like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I goes, you know, I think Dave's got something here. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I'm glad we got to Chris in the studio. With yeah, you me, me too. You're oh, right. Yeah. It is like a, a weird because I think we all started off as kind of being the same shithead, right? And this we so we've been doing pod, the podcast for like 12 years, something like yeah. that. So I think we started off as sort of being the same like pothead, pussy hound. Like we were just sort of like our our values were all in line, and then we all just kind of grew into whatever we grew into. We all grew up. We have kids. We were, none of us were fathers when we started the podcast. Jay was, but we weren't fathers when Jay we started was a the father podcast before we got into comedy. I think. Jay was a father yeah, was way right too way young, pretty early though. Yeah. Yeah, like but 22. after the podcast started taking off, he started taking care of the kids. Yeah, so that, that he actually yeah. became a good father. Got those nice. teeth straight. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd never get, fixed my kids' teeth. Why? I liked them better ugly. <laughs> I don't like a kid with confidence. Like, there's, well, you got a daughter in college now, so that's got to be sort of scary. Uh, yeah, you want to make your home. daughter. You want to make your daughter as ugly and fat as possible. I, uh, I thought about that, but then only ethnics come knocking. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Why is it that Puerto Ricans and black guys We really don't have much standards We're you just like ready a, You like a lot of oof in your ladies Yeah. <laughs> Although I've heard I heard a, a black comic Told me recently the plan Because I was like There's a comic I've known forever And when he, we were younger He used to just get like Black dude he used to get like The hottest chicks And this chick he's been with now for a long time And has like you know essentially a family with Is like not a good looking chick. She's like a yeah. bigger chick and whatever. And, you know, I'm sure she's great. It's got nothing to do with that. But I was like, I wonder what the change was. And another black comic goes, that's the move, man. He goes, if you can't, like, make it yourself, you just get a girl who's got some shit going on. And, like, she'll take care of you. It's like, like the young black comics, like, thing is like, just find a fat white bitch. She'll take care of you. <laughs> it's the same thing about getting out of jail thing. That's why I love Love After Lockup. It's just muscular guys coming out of jail to be with their morbidly obese girlfriends. Well, I just think that, like, you're just not going to get fucking... If you want a hot chick, you have to, you have to get, it's almost like if you want to be in shape, you got to give up cake. You can't have abs and cake, right? You can't yeah. have a hot chick and a chick who's going to fucking like take care of your shit. You know, it just doesn't really happen too often. Depends on the guy, I think particularly, but it's probably easier to get someone who is just a mess and have him take care of you. What are you talking about? Dude on dude? No. Because I just watched the movie Bros. <laughs> have you yeah. seen Bros? Oh, is that feel? that new gay comedy yeah. that bombed? Uh, it, 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 well, first of all, it's it, I wish I had watched it with Jay. Because, you know, like when you watch, I remember, remember the day I had like a huge panic attack? And, and you were like, oh, you hey, went man. to my house. Yeah, yeah. you're like, you want to just come over and watch Cops? And I was like, <laughs> okay. And then I just sat wow, and watched. What a Jay thing. I know that's true. Yeah, right? Yeah. I know the that's thing is, 100% and by yeah. the way, the day started with Jay trying to get someone to come over and watch Cops. <laughs> yeah. He just yeah. shoehorned that into your situation. Every day in the shower, I go, I wonder if someone's going to come over and watch a cop. <laughs> yeah. really Josh Edemeyer just grabbed me and he goes, Jay, hanging with you, just sit in the dark and watch cops. That's what your, so your phone call right before that was like, uh, like Lewis was like, uh, hey, what's up, dude? And you go, hey, you want to come over and watch cops? And he goes, I got to leave. I got to go out of town. And then Bert calls and goes, I'm having a huge panic attack. And you go, you know what, dude? Take a I deep breath. Yeah. Perfect remedy. Come over and watch no, cops. No, I know exactly what happened. The night before was 
uh, roast masters that Burke came oh. to. And when I told everyone Joe DeRosa does coke. <laughs> oh, I remember that. You know, that's the best. Turn it bagged on Nate too. He goes, he goes, this guy did coke and this guy smoked weed. <laughs> Sorry, <he's laughs> laughing. And you see Nate go like, ha, 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 ha. I and shouldn't DeRosa, even be here, man. Yeah. Nate, man, Nate is a different human being these days. Have you seen him? Yeah. Oh, he is man. like sk- good looking. Yeah, yeah Nate was not never always, handsome. Not always, never he was always handsome. funny, but he was never not handsome. Not always he's super handsome. He's just like, he did wealth in a different way than I think you do it, Bert. In a sense, like Nate's like really like if his pants, I bet his pants are four hundred dollar like golf. No, pants. they're not. They're Viore because I have the same pants and they're fucking dope ass. Viore pants. makes they're, great. They're great. They they're great like one hundred and twenty bucks a yeah. pair, they're, they're, but they're not like crazy expensive. They're his sponsor. You're on telling his me podcast. for one hundred and twenty dollars, I can get Nate pants, Nate level pants. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're great. They're pleated. They're, they're my, pleated. I, I stopped wearing them because my chick made fun of them. Right. She at one point I was like, I was like, how great are these pants? She was like, how many pair of drawstring pants do you own? <laughs> They're so fucking comfortable. You I don't walked, need a belt. I went. I went. Best. I put my hand in a in in a in like a they had pants in an outdoor shop, and I was like, what are these pants? And I felt them, and I go, the fuck are these? Yeah. And I, I go, that's a podcast sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Nate is like, well, he's I got, love. He's I got, love. He's got a tour like barber. Like guy that tours him does all of his like you know like it was so funny watching the opening to his special because he like you know he does a thing where he walks out and he says hello to all of his friends his yeah. crew his family but then for some reason just at the top of the stairs is Nick Novicki who's a, a little person yeah. who's oh I love Nick we've done him for years hilarious but you know if you don't know and that's a like, comic I've like known for twenty years <laughs> probably sixty years in midget years <laughs> <laughs> I've known this guy three lifetimes in midget years. Doggy. But if you don't know that, like, he's your opener, he's like, why is there just a midget there? He's <laughs> yeah. like the most psychotic, psychotic random Nate thing. Nate is so cool. <laughs> he's just there for everybody. Well, dude, it's like midgets and drag queens. When they look at you at times, and they go, what are you looking at? You go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the freak show. Uh, it's like people with tattoos covered in tattoos. There, then, and, Hold you on. Know, tattoos. Tutus? I, I say it differently. Tattoos? Tattoos. Okay. Tattoos. 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 I just want to make sure I heard it right. Tattoos. I've, I've lost a sponsor because of it. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's tattoo shop? No, no. It was uh, there was a great cream that you can put on your tattoos, <laughs> and, and they were podcast sponsored. And they're like, "Hey, we, we need you to say it the right way." And I was like, "That's how I say it." And they're like, "It's it's kind of our thing." Yeah. <laughs> and and you're fucking up the read. And I was like, All right, "Well, I'm greed greed or disagree." But um, yeah, Nate is skinny, and I liked DUI Nate. Like when you'd go to yeah, me too. Like I and I, I love. I'm gonna see him when he's coming to Wednesday. Red State Nate. Yeah, yeah, I like I liked the oh, beer drinking. The Super Bowl? What is Nate going to the Super Bowl? Yeah, he's, uh, I don't think he's just going out to play golf. To be dead honest with you, wow. Are you going to the Super Bowl? No, why not? My mom's coming up oh. to like hang with me and stuff, so it's exciting. I'm she's a real slut. Her. So she's okay. a slut. No, she yeah. loves the Eagles. Could I stuff, change so. your mind for f- what free tickets? I give you. I give you a ticket to go to the Super Bowl with me and Shane Gillis and Mark Norman. <sighs> Let me think about it. Wow, well, watch. I love the fact Jay like pretended that he wanted to hang out with his mom yeah but all it took was a rich friend to offer him a ticket <laughs> one time and there wasn't even like a bribe associated with <laughs> no. it. it was like here's your offer a ticket <laughs> yeah. like, screw you mom it's, uh, they're, it's, it's the eagles and the they're Super pretty Bowl. great tickets they're pretty great tickets and he's gone he's come to over. the mullet arena with us and low-key shane and mark have been texting me non-stop about getting you to go and low-key we called christine and asked if she thought you'd go. And she was like, I don't think he's going to go. He wants to watch it at home. But you should twist his arm. Jay, can you be honest for a minute, though? Can you tell Bert what you said to us about why you wouldn't want to go to the Super Bowl? You think Bert's gay and you don't like him? Yeah, you don't like Bert. Wait, I, just, is it, I didn't watch all of Bros. Do you want to be <laughs> <laughs> You turned it off when you came? <laughs> Dude, they fuck in the butt. Like one guy goes. Really? No, no. It's, like, it's like the moving part of the story is, is Billy Eichner is like, kind of like the... Uh, the he's like the bottom he's the bottom right because he's like the soft one and Jay was like no the, the other guy's like Stop. jacked and he's and, the, and billy Eichner just lets him fuck him in the ass all the time and then then the moving the moment where you, the rom-com switches the big guy goes you can fuck me in the ass tonight oh and he's like oh for real and then he fucks him in the ass and then they have sex with fucking four dudes Shyamalan twist it's a it's an interesting movie i could really break it down yeah i'd love to hear it i uh <laughs> i think we got I it i remember kevin hart promoted it which was like is he like a producer on it or something no uh judd apatow was but there's a moment where all the celebrities who want you to know that they've never said the f word well that's what i said Kev, well kev's thing particularly was like a gay thing when he got fired from the oscars yeah. 
So he, uh, yeah, he came out, but he had a big post about like this movie, dude, game changer. And I will say what's funny is I thought it for, it's me. Like when you know you're the problem of something, because I watched uh, a couple horror movies I've seen uh, recently have been like gay couple or gay director, like horror movies. And they have, and they have aggressive, well, they make a thing of it. And they have aggressive butt and fuck action. Scenes. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, have, they, have Cut. Aggr- they have aggressive butt fuck scenes in them, and I'm like, I always go, I'm like, all right, stop shoving it down our throats. But at the same time, I'm like, almost every horror movie has like a guy girl like sex scene. You're like, nice. But what tits. are the percent? Let me just say, what are the percentage of people in the world that are actually gay? It's a pretty I think small. It's, percentage. It's, I think it's growing. No, it's growing because they're they're fucking making it cool now. I've never seen yeah. a video of gay sex. It doesn't look like an assault. It never looks loving. Dude, I'll tell you what, when I first, I when one, I first I moved to New York City and I saw cool. two guys kiss for the first time, it was like I was watching Aliens Land Lewis, on Earth. Yeah. Lewis came from like a garbage like trailer park. Like, uh, so I did. see two guys because it picks up a rock. Guys, get him. Are we all together? No? What do you mean? We're cool with it? crazy, dude. The but first you know, time I, I saw it. But now, I mean, it's like nothing. You, you live in big funny. cities, New York, LA. It's literally nothing. But I remember the first time it was like, I still what the think, fuck I, is I, that? I, I said it on stage this weekend. I go... It's funny how much, like, for, I'm just unquestionably total gay rights, I believe. And so why am I still called homophobic when I see two guys kiss? I still go, ah. Because I'll tell you, there's a part. Because it really is. I just okay, see this go, they, what? You, you have to watch the movie, bros. There is a lot of kissing. Please, this is a, let let say, kissing scene but, right but now. Wait, wait, this is the, the thing that all straight guys have, and I think this is the reason why we have this reaction every time you see two gay dudes kissing, is the same thing you see if you see a clip of gay porn or something like that. We played on the podcast. Every time you see it, in you're your like, life. they actually Whatever. do it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't yeah. believe, you're almost like, I know, I, in my you're mind, I know those gay dudes. But then you're yeah. when you see when it. you meet a gay couple, you're like, dude, one of you goes elbows to the bed while the other one <laughs> crams his pecker in your shit butt. And I kissed <laughs> Jay, by the way. I, like, so hey, me and Jay made out one time on the podcast oh, just yeah. to freak Dave out. Just, yeah. just, it worked. To, just to make Dave uncomfortable. I have a visual of Bobby Kelly sucking your cock. No, I'm sucking his cock. You, yeah, uh, why would you make that, that correction? You could have just let Bert go on <laughs> thinking it was it Bobby matter. Kelly. will find it. <laughs> <clears throat> but you, no, but uh, you know it wasn't a real cock. Right? I, I thank God. I know. My, can I say this? My girlfriend, she told me this a week ago. I've been dating her for like nine months. Yeah. She goes. She thought it was Big J. First of all, um, she was like, and she was like, uh, she brought it up. She was like, oh yeah, like that video of you sucking Big J's dick. And I was like, first of all, it was Bobby Kelly. And I was like, and it was a dildo. You know that, right? She's like, she's like, oh no, I really thought you just blew Big J in front of three hundred people. And she yeah. still was with me, which I gotta say, she's a fucking down ass shit. <laughs> yeah, you okay. should you should That's, marry her. I love when when Ari. Uh, drugged me Isla and Georgia were walking behind we were talking with with friends at the table about it and we changed the subject real quick and Isla goes dad we know I go what do you what do you know and they go what Ari did to you and I was like what do you know and they go dad you talked about it on Joe Rogan it's like everyone in school knows what happened to you and I went your school knows she goes yeah Ari roofied and raped you and I went well hold on <laughs> what <laughs> rape me she goes well why would he roof you if he wasn't gonna rape you I go wait a minute hold what? On. I go wow. better and then Leah goes the better question is better question is you didn't you thought your dad was raped in the backyard and you didn't say anything until now <laughs> like fucking nine months she goes I, just I, love- thought, I thought it was a little too soon yeah. bring it up I just love that your daughter's logic was so on point she yeah. just goes well who's gonna roofie someone <laughs> yeah. well, my not finish the job now 10, how many so he t- has like YouTube and has the internet so I have to literally get ahead of him finding this video one day well how many oh, friends oh, i have to let him sit him down by james all right once he understands what sucking dick is the first conversation i have with him is like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's dick? sucking oh, dick God. i told him on his birthday the first <laughs> time he okay he goes, okay we sit down oh, he goes some guys do it as a dude <laughs> <laughs> just so you know he's just never gonna know. understand how hilarious it is <laughs> He goes, the problem is like, uh, here, sucking uh, dick is weird, but if you do it for a laugh, Jay, it's not that be bad. Great. If he found out at 21, like <laughs> this 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 video, he'd be like, all right, it's pretty hilarious. But he's likely going to find it at 13. It's going to traumatize him. He'll never come to terms with the hilarity oh, of it. Yeah. So I got to know. Isabel a, a scene. I think uh, me and you making out. I think but that's a little. Here's it. Here's not. It's not even that. It, me well, that's real. It, me blowing a dildo is one thing, right? It's just, it's stupid. The context you have to understand. Internet trolls have just clipped out. 30 seconds. It, yeah. It's me getting down on my knees where Bobby Kelly's laughing, where Jim Norton's looking horny in the background, and it's me just sucking what looks to be a very real dick. So you don't my, need more than that. That's my the context. My son's just going to find that with no context. That's yeah. it. And I have to get ahead of that thing. 
And yeah, I think I'm about trying it, to think if I tell I, you not, I think about it every day of my life. Are you serious? Every day of my life, like how I'm going to get ahead well, of this with my son. Bert, do you wonder how many uh, other kids Isla like confided in? Because if she hasn't brought it up to you, she's been like, yeah, things have been a little dicey at the house since dad got raped. <laughs> I think, well, you know what's so funny is I think that she is such a different child. I bet, and she does not like uh, being known. Like she doesn't like anyone to know her. And she wants, she, I, I mean, in hindsight, me talking as much about my kids as I have on stage, uh, probably, I probably should have maybe like consulted them or something. I started doing that when Isabel was like 14. She had a certain age, yeah, I understand. Especially at 14, embarrassing I started what's, what's, You have embarrassing shit about your daughter in your act where I remember just being like, watching it and being like, fuck dude. I was like, I wonder how she's gonna feel about that later on. What's funny is she now, when it, cause you know, it'll come up and stuff in like uh, oh, social guess, media yeah. and stuff. And she gives up like it's funny. She does like it, though. you know. What I mean, like she thinks yeah, it's like James funny. likes well, the attention. Hold on, yeah, yeah. Let, she doesn't love the she doesn't love the attention. She'll tell me if like uh, you know one of your fans like figured out who I am and like reached out to me. I'm that was fucking. Him. That was why I handled that. Thank God, I think with funny, but that was a wacky thing what, what? when a guy in the audience in Boston. Remember, do you, were you there? That like no. I did that. Some guy goes, "Your daughter's hot," and I was like. <clears throat> You know, then I just said, look, make fun of him from the, the distance or whatever. Like, yeah. I kept, but I was like, when you first hear it, though, you're like, all right, buddy. All right, pal. Yeah, yeah. that's weird. No, I, but she's I, also 20. George, you know what I mean? Like, which so is get in there. <laughs> she's 20. So go ahead. That's well, make a move, I think that's what bro. happens. The crowd started shitting on him for saying that. And I was like, don't boo. That could be my future son in law right there. <laughs> I wish Georgia wouldn't date one of my fans. Why? I don't know. I like, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I mean who doesn't want to hang out with like it's my biggest the, like, fear he was gonna have Isabella his daughter come to skank fest and oh, I just became yeah. a protective uncle Lewis and no I was we're, like, we're talking about bringing her um we we're gonna do uh fully loaded in Europe and he was like let's bring our kids and have them PA we'll have them work yeah I thought George it's different though along. very different so skank fest you've been to skank fest hang on I, I so badly I put a pin in skank fest I want to talk about skank fest yeah because I mean I I I Two things. Number one, I, I started Fully Loaded thinking, legit thinking, I was the first comic to do this. And then someone hit me up and was like, so you're just going to steal the idea of Skankfest. Oh, and I, for a second, well, hold on, you replied and you went, totally different things. But I, all, all of a sudden I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh shit, yeah, Skankfest is the fucking, like, Skankfest is the OG festival. It's the OG festival. You are you are doing something extremely unique. We did something extremely unique. They're, I mean, night well, and day like different. In, I like in uh, Skankfest, like I said, is really like the, the, the party. The, the temple, I'm saying the template of what uh, you guys do on Skankfest is, I think, much more in line with the like Gathering of the Juggalos. It's destination all in one well, place. Well, honestly, Bert, you should, you, this, the, you mentioned cruises before. The, the Skank Fest, when we came up with it, we had just done Ship Rocked. We had done a few cruises, right? And there was heavy metal cruises. Yeah. And we were on the boat, and there was like, you know, deck one, there's one concert going on. Deck two, there's something else going mm -hmm. on. There's a meet and greet up here. There's all these different things. And then everyone's in the cafeteria eating together. Everyone's drinking. You can't escape the boat. Yeah. So when we conceptualized Skank Fest, that was the idea. It was like, we need to make it one venue. But at the time, we could only afford a sailboat. Yeah. So yeah. It, uh, <laughs> sailboat. We could only, yeah. It's going to be one. One really small venue, <laughs> but no, we we create we multiple stages all one place. You don't leave most of the comedy festivals. You're popping around to different things. Yeah. That that's a different. Yours is a fucking and like yours is like Ozfest, like it's a rock concert that like features the best comedians, rock star level comedians. It's a completely different thing, and, and I, I'm I've, glad you you doing things like that. Or it's just incredible for comedy. I think it's I think oh, it's I, I, I I do think it's good for comedy. I do think I, what I think is really great is. Uh, I mean, I, I'll say it just for Jay, like why? Because Jay was initially going to host on Fully Loaded, because he was like, oh, I'll just host and just have a camera and I'll do crowd work. But watching Jay do like twelve thousand seat arenas and sitting on a stool and murdering was like, I just was, everyone was like, God damn it, man, that's like. And then, but no, but you're creating those. That's, it's th thank you, as I said before. But like you, you creating those opportunities is that? It's like I'm not. You know, me, Norman, uh, you know, uh, who knows how far Shane is, but Shane, like we're, Aaron Weber, we're not getting up in front of crowds. Like, that's what's fucking like a mate. You know what I mean? Like, I've always said, I've always we said, we got to play like dream play, like, playing baseball stadiums. Well, I, I took, it's fucking nuts. Hey guys, I, took Chris I, I fucking murdered at the Funny Bone in Cuyahoga Falls last weekend. So <laughs> they, they hadn't seen that many tickets sold on Friday <laughs> since two weekends earlier. <laughs> so let's, we all got stories. Oh, I've told you, I, I mean, that, I, I haven't done it in a while, but like, whatever the new management I got, 
started or now uh the new assistant for my agent started set was sending i think we talked about Wait, this are you a different so, agency no caa oh yeah but the, Justin, new, right? the new assistant yeah the new assistant at one point was sending out ticket counts and like way out also oh, yeah. so that was just like i was like yo it's crushing me and so i looked at uh, like, hey, please don't send them anymore ticket counts always hurt like you like no matter where you are in your career your ticket counts because then you're like fuck what the fuck like Bert's like I lost count <laughs> no 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 I get well because I get I, I remember first getting Bert, ticket counts Bert, Bert dives into his Scrooge McDuck money pit <laughs> <laughs> he's making snow making money angels and thinking he was like huh it's uh the um no but Skanks Fest for me and when I when I started thinking about it I was like what you guys are doing is on such a big fucking level and the talent you get is i mean I, I like you get people the big thing you do is you go right to the comic and that's fucking a game changer agents are can be difficult especially they don't, I, I found out they don't even fucking send the offers this yeah. is what happens very often they, they see the word skank fest and they go so yeah, no. and it doesn't even get back to them and then the comics get mad the impressive thing about it is like to watch it actually so organically grow well, you were there like the every, first every, one, yeah, I think, dude. Dude, right? I was, Not the it first, was the, but it was the, the second, second one. one. It was the, the funnest one. time I'd ever had. I, I flew in. I was laying in bed at like nine in the morning, and I got a call from Nate, who I barely knew at the time. He's like, I know you party. I party. Let's go. They're already started. And I was like, what? He was like, let's go. And we went over to that bar. And I, I, I try not to drink before I go on stage. That morning, I was like, this is not about the show tonight this is about the hang <laughs> yeah and it was me nate mark norman bobby Kell. it was the greatest fucking Buddy, hang what he's talking about that hang he's talking about I'll tell you where it was happening outside in the courtyard because yeah. i yeah. that after that skank fest i had to go or like right after that skank fest was burt kreish or not burt uh rich voss roast oh yeah I remember. oh i remember that and i had to like write i was just procrastinated on writing for it a ton so I was like, on some of my downtime at Skank Fest, Rebecca's like, you can go up to my apartment and write. And it's summertime, so you had the window open. And I'm just sitting there, you know, I'm like, Colin Quinn is so old. And I just hear outside Burt going like, ah, he's Bobby <laughs> Kelly. And I was just like, I, just, I want to have shade. I had the I heard, I heard Yamanika out there yelling. I was like, I want to go have this. Shit. You had comedy detention while all yeah, your friends yes. were playing in the it's court. Like, it was, it was a sick day. You're sitting everyone's like snow, uh, like, uh, sledding and shit. Dude, dude we, we had... And then that night ended. I'm I'm being dead serious. The funnest time I've ever had, because that night ended with all the fucking Legion of Skanks fans in the basement with me with our shirts, shirts off. off. Yeah, party. One of us. Yeah, yeah. I remember one that. of us. And I'm I remember is at that time I don't think I was I, I don't know if I was selling tickets or not. Because because obviously like I, I've had a lot of moments like that now, but I hadn't at that time. Yeah. And it was like these dudes knew who I was, yeah, and they and they liked me, and they and when I came in, they all took their shirts off, and it was such an organic moment of of like real comedy fans, yeah, like yeah, real real comedy fans. They're hardcore. That's why I say that. If you go, to, if you look at Skankfest, our audience, they look like they're like heavy metal people. They look like they're going to be like intimidating. Yeah, they're the biggest comedy nerds in the world. They they, they we cry. Sell at Skank Fest they cry when they meet us. Sometimes. Before we before we yeah. announce a single comic, we sell at Skank Fest within minutes. It's, it's that's two, what two, I was going to say. It's very impressive. That's what this and the ship and, rock thing these was sort people, of that. Souls out on concept. These people are. I mean, they are fucking hardcore, and they know everybody. Even to the guys that are younger comics that aren't as known, maybe they guest on a couple of podcasts here and there. These guys, our, our audience, knows them to a whole other level. So when you come to Skankfest, even as a young comic, you feel like a genuine fucking rock star. Yeah. Guys walk out going like, "Holy shit!" And you know, being a young comic, growing up in comedy, you don't really get that until you get to your level. You don't. Yeah. You don't really. Yeah. You know, until you get to a really big fucking level, where you have a massive audience where like you're doing theaters. You don't feel like Chill a rock it. star. Even when no. you're headlining clubs, you kind of feel like Joe you're eating List. shit. You, you know, you, you know, you you show up at a 75 percent, 50 percent sold out room. You, the the bartender doesn't know who you are. They're kind of rude to you. Ooh. It's not a glamorous lifestyle until it's a glamorous lifestyle. Joe Lift said that was that what keeps him going in comedy. He was coming to Skankfest. He goes, "Oh, people do know me, I guess." Well, it's <laughs> cool. It's, that that, time it's really that cool to see like what you're talking about then, where you were like, you know, whatever this is like, 
I don't know, six, seven years ago now or something. It had to be. And you're like, you're like, oh, I hadn't really gotten that before. It's a very cool thing about Skankfest, like Lewis was saying, like watching people get that for the first time. Mm Because I'll see that for a lot of like the the younger guys, like where they're they're kind of, they might be on Legion of Skanks a lot. Or the Kim Congdens who walk around like they are celebrities. Like those guys show up and they're like, people want autographs and pictures and like nonstop. So so they're regulars on our podcast or whatever. And then they're doing Skankfest and you see them take like a sold out room in the crowd. Like not just like, oh, here's your next comic claps. Like they're so psyched to see oh, that yeah, person yeah. applause. Yeah. And it's cool to like watch that, yeah. watch them get that. It's it's the, I, I think. Yeah. Skanks, it's also different. It's almost like, it's not just stand up. Like they're seeing live music. They're seeing live podcasts. Like Steve-O, Steve-O came out and he did, I did, a, I do the Real Ass Talent Show where we have audience members just do different talents and they try to win prize money. And Steve-O showed up as a surprise guest and judge. So, I mean, but he came out and he, he balanced a fucking table on his chin. I mean, standing ovation. Like these people were yeah, losing their yeah. minds. How fucking, how. Dude, Paulie Shore, they just fucking love, they were just psyched to and see him. he stink. No, I'm kidding. Paulie's great. <laughs> <laughs> Paulie's great. I, I love no, but I'm saying no, before, yeah. but the thing is like, Paulie, it's just some degree, like will become a punchline in some things just because he's like a, the face of an era. You yeah. know what I mean? So he's subject to that, but everyone was just stoked to see Paulie yeah. Shore. Like, yeah, like, oh, wow, people give him yeah, a, a lot of love. Bert, hopefully one day once. Um, I, I just got the offer for Skankfest, and I don't think I have a. Where is it this Wait, year? It's in Vegas again. Yeah, do I, you don't have a thing? I, have, I don't think I have a Vegas date yet. What are we doing? So I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. They when is it? October. No, I'm sorry, September 29th or October. Oh, 1st. Bert, you'll be blown away to where how much it's bigger it's gotten. You and haven't been there. It's literally ten times as large, but it's still small. It's only a few thousand people, yeah. so everyone's. But that is what that's what's so cool about it is like when you did it, Bert. Like it was hundreds of people. And if we open this up significantly bigger, it would sell out. But it is kind we of we can't cool to open keep it. The so yeah. one of the other things is, I we could easily make this twice as big. We sell yeah. it in minutes, right? Yeah. It would change the experience. It can't be. It has to feel like a party. You got to yeah. be able to fucking take shots with your favorite comedian. My dream fucking- is until it can be gathering a juggalo style, big large tent outside tent. Yeah, because well, well, could you do? Could you do a skank fest? I want to cruise. Like- Dude. That's what I want to do, bro. That's what I want to pick your brain about because you did a cruise. I'm doing it. Doing I, it. Yeah, yeah, do it. I'm when when's it. your cruise? Uh, end of October. I want to do Skankfest cruise so badly. Uh, That's where the concept def- came from. You can from. definitely do it. How, you can definitely do oh, it for without sure. a doubt. I, I mean, our, I was nervous if I was. You only got to s- sell three thousand cabins. How many? How much yeah. is like the average package? Uh, I, I think I, I'm I'm bad to talk about this, but I think like. Sixteen hundred bucks, maybe. It's about the same price as it's going to cost you to go to Skankfest. When it, oh when no, it, you're you're wrong. About it. It's okay. cheaper than that. It could, it's, I, I mean, I really I, you I have to make your own because that. the idea is it's not it's it should be more expensive than just like taking a carnival cruise because you're giving them like, they're paying for an experience, so you could charge more than that. But it's still like I remember on ship, more or less? when we did Shiprock, like less. it's not. I was saying like, it, when I did Shiprock, the people were like, yeah, it's not. It's like about they said about five hundred a person. Well, what's what's cool about so we the went, lowest level pack. We went to do promos. I was like. I was terrified it wasn't going to sell out the cruise. It sold out, and it sold out in pre-sale. And yeah. so, uh, I feel like this year I'm going to be like the little guy who stands next to Busta Rhymes for Bert. <laughs> <laughs> the the we went to the cruise. They gave us the ship for the morning to shoot promos. And so I was, I was, I was like real heavy on promos so that we have a fucking <clears throat> good uh, pre-sale. And we watched them load up for the Kiss cruise, and I. I'm not a big Gene Simmons fan, uh, and personally, I met him and I don't like him. <laughs> but to watch people show up for the thing they really fucking love was the coolest yeah. thing in the world. And I was like, and obviously, a lot of older dudes, a lot of older single dudes, thinning, dyed hair, like <laughs> you mean you, the, the it, pathetic, it, ugly, it was, it was, pieces of shit. It was like crazy. But man, I was like, oh. The idea that that they're all into something, that energy is what Skankfest has. Yeah, and it's same. I mean, fully loaded is as you draw from so many different comics. Like there's a Tell fans, there's Jay fans, there's Gillis fans, Mark Norman, Nikki Glazer, Taylor Thomason. But like Skankfest is like a fucking. Well, the other thing you get to see because it's a destination and everybody comes. Oh, I'm, I'll just have another beer. Everybody comes from yeah, all please, over. Thank you. Everybody comes from all over to it. Um, it's, damn, I think I'm stoned. I'm going to forget my own thought. I got wrapped up. I'm like, Tito's yeah, vodka. Man. What's happening? You want Go a Tito's? Um, no, I just lost my I train of thought on from saying. I'm trying not to get too fucked up because we still have to do a something's burning tonight. I got to make you guys dinner. What are you making us? Uh, I don't know. I know yeah. I know that it's Puerto Rican and Jewish. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. all right. <laughs> uh, my initial idea was Happy I was trying to think of something very Puerto Rican and Jewish, Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know what I came up with. 
I know what I passed on. What'd you pass Fucking on? Fucking smoked salmon empanadas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, ah. Perneal yeah. uh, uh, bagel bites. So wait, so wait here's, here's the, the question. question. Here's the question. How many... Did Bob, was did you were you a part of you know what dude network first before you started yours? No, no. Oh uh, yes, that's not true. I was. Yeah, I had a, I had a show on Riotcast. I mean, very Riot rarely. Cast, I, I did a Cast. podcast called Hammer Fisting with Dave Smith. Um, Hammer Fisting with Lewis and Dave. That was before Legion of Skanks, before anything else. And Dave, he Sweet. had no faith in podcasting. He, I had a little like we recorded an MP. Uh, yes. So we recorded an MP3. It recorder. seemed ridiculous at the time. This is 15 years ago. Nobody was podcasting yet, right? And I was like, "No, this podcasting thing it's is just Bobby was great. really. Bo Bobby was, um, but I did it independently. Me and Bobby linked up because we both happened to be independently podcasting, right? And we started doing this, and Dave would literally not even talk. He would roll his eyes the whole time as I was trying to like talk about MMA. I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. It was the worst setup. I had a, a Jack Russell Terrier that I never got him groomed ever, so it was just dog hair in a hot apartment just circulating <laughs> in the air. And uh, that was the precursor to all the shit. I wish we had those ones. Well, I give you credit for it now, but at the time, it seemed really, really dumb. I love my electric e-bike. This thing is awesome. We drive, we are about two miles from our house, the new studio, and there is no better feeling than doing a workout in the morning, getting out ice cold. It's been ice cold lately in LA. Getting on my electric e-bike and flying. That, I feel like I'm doing a polar plunge on my face. If you think an e-bike... Can't handle your haul? Think again. The all-new Expedition by Electric is the cargo e-bike designed to carry more so you can do more and enjoy fresh air in the meantime. And I'm telling you right now, you will get fresh air shoved up your nose. These things fly. They are so much fun. Whether you're packing your groceries, gear, or even an extra passenger, the Expedition e-bike has you covered, and it does. Now, I bring back stuff from this studio to that studio. I dropped my a skateboard off of my sister's house with it. From quick store trips to outdoor adventures, electric e-bike will transform how you get around. They cost way less than the competition with quality features, packed models, finance as low as $133 per month. They include a powerful removable battery, a bright LCD screen, seven speed gearing, and five levels of pedal assist to power your ride. Plus, you can lower your gas costs and reduce your carbon footprint. Who doesn't love that? Make it your own. Electric e-bikes are customizable and adjustable to fit your lifestyle. Electric e-bikes are foldable and ship free, fully assembled. And they do ship free, fully assembled. I got mine, literally opened it up and went for a ride. Check out the all new Expedition Cargo e-bike from Electric. Visit electricebikes.com to learn more about the Expedition Cargo e-bike and all other sweet models Electric has to offer. That's L. E C T R I C E bikes.com. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. When you're at your best, you can do great things. But sometimes life gets you bogged down and you feel like you're not showing up the way you want to. You may feel overwhelmed. Well, working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you. Because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything th life throws at you. I was a begrudging therapy guy at the front. Leanne got me into therapy. And at times I've, I've bailed on therapy and been like, I got this. And then you start getting overwhelmed and all it takes is one person to go, hey man, have you been going to therapy? And you're like, oh, that's the fix. What's great about BetterHelp, what I love about BetterHelp, I, I brought it up to a person at dinner the other night. They were going through something. And I said, have you thought about therapy? And they're like, I don't even know. And I literally did this read to them. I go, hold on, BetterHelp is the best option in my opinion, if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, it's convenient, it's flexible, it's affordable, and it's entirely online. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Literally, I gave that speech at dinner, and the guy's like, for real? Dude's in therapy. Dude's in therapy. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Burt today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash Bert. Because it was seven people listening. We have the numbers. The first Legion of Skanks. Really, we, the first really. Legion of Skanks were talking about like 50 people. What is this? Literally 50 people listening to the first Legion of Skanks, and you did it because it wasn't your first was audience. Year. We did it because it was like You did it out of a basement, right? You, we did it out of my apartment. Uh, apartment. Yeah. yeah, a little tiny. But at first well, I think at the end of our first seat. year, I think when we hit like a year in, we saw like we were up to like four hundred listeners and we were like, yo. 
That's crazy. Well, here's the thing. Bert. <laughs> like, it, it, look, yeah, it's not in a bad way. We were dumb, like, I can't but, believe no, four people are listening to this. It, this is actually why I started Gas Digital. When I started Gas Digital, Real Ass Podcast, Legion of Skanks was on Anthony Cumia's network. Dave Smith's show, part of the problem. Legion of Skanks was on Anthony, Anthony Cumia's Cumia. network. Yeah. So wait, so you guys are post the ONA breakup? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Legion no, of Skanks no, might be around. They were still there. I think they were still together. No, we were, we were doing the podcast for a while. And then when Anthony, uh, the, when ONA broke up, he started his own thing. And they, he made us an offer to go over with him. Yeah. So we, at that point, we had been doing the show for years already. And now. his was now, all subscription based, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and then after we a year, we were like, <laughs> so two, 2000. <laughs> after a year, we were like, I can't get, so we're already always in our own trouble. I don't want other people's trouble. That's not true. That's not why we left. They, we left because That's they didn't my thing. I was like, yo, we're getting in trouble for other people's shit. <laughs> we, were, we were, we were, it, 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 regardless. We started, we started um, Gas Digital. It was Dave Smith's show. He had 2,000 people listening in an episode. Real Ass Podcast, 2,000 people. And SDR show, which was Big J's other show. Yeah. Um, with Rare Offside, and that was about 2,000 people. And 2,000 people is nothing in podcast. Literally nothing. It's, they won't even, if you want to talk to advertisers, they won't even talk to you to so you have 50 yeah. or 100,000 downloads an episode. But in my mind, I was going, dude, if I had fucking 2,000 people showing up every week in a parking lot, they would send in the National Guard. They would go, this is some crazy yeah. shit. Yeah. So I was like, that's- that, and A local also, police department could probably handle it. And there are also, no, 2,000 people, know. it would be fucking wild. Dude. The they would show up with the army. 2,000 people- You could storm the Capitol. It would Keep be going. fucking crazy, dude. 2,000 people is a lot of people. So in my head, there was only 1,100 at the Wilbur Theater. We were very proud. <laughs> Jay. Well, that's, yeah, I, that my is point, that's almost the point, though. Like, two Wilbur Theaters, they wouldn't go on the National they Guard. They would call on the National Guard. If there's 2,000 people that was causing a ruckus- Nah. Yeah. Like, yes. All right, well, how unruly are these people showing up to your podcast? <laughs> I say three. I say three. They're real ass dudes. <laughs> yeah, they're all real ass dude. <laughs> oh no, they're real ass dude in the street. Code six six four. Louis goes. Listen, I got thirteen people listening to this show. If thirteen people kidnap the president, they call in the army for that guy, right? So <laughs> that's your glass half full theory, right there. You go. Only four hundred people are listening. But if 400 people try to break into a house, they'd kill everybody inside. But there's no so casuals. You gotta look at it there's as also like no the... casuals. At 2,000 people, there's no, no casual. They are fucking hardcore. There hard are no core. casual. Five isn't a lot of people. There are no casual 2,000 listeners. That's five isn't it. a lot of people, but if five people were fucking you in the ass at the same time, it's too much. <laughs> there, was a, there was a dude who had... Was it on SoundCloud? I forget where you could see how many yep. downloads he was getting. And I was one of five. And, <laughs> and he had hit me up. He had just gotten out of prison and he was talking about how hard it was to transition and I, I did like into regular life and I listened to his first episode and I DM'd him. I said, this was really fascinating. And then the next episode, he's like, man, I only got five listeners, but I know Burt Kreischer's one of them. And I was like, Oh fuck. Now I can listen to every episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I mean, I know what you're you saying. Listen to every episode for him going like, you know, what I'm talking about Burt. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. But I remember when I started this podcast, it was because of Segura and Joey. Segura came up. Segura told me all the shit to buy. I bought it. I hooked it up. And then it was Easter and Joey Diaz was over and my dad was there. And Segura just went and handed everyone a mic and then went over and hit record. And he goes, don't edit it. Just post it. Yeah. And I was like, and then my dad called. He's like, you got to edit it. <laughs> he was like, Joey Diaz said some horrible. I mean, Joe, this is back. This is back before anyone knew what cancel culture was. Yeah. <laughs> and Joey said the most cancelable things you've ever well, heard. Like, we didn't know. We just, we, said, yeah. we just said today, I go, when we, again, we're performing for like this cult people who know who we are and want to hear our exact thing. It was like, that's what hit us in the guts is like when people who didn't like us started listening just to see what's going on. Yeah. And then you're like, and they go back and you're like, oh, but we were just like being three assholes like in a basement you know what i mean yeah and they're holding you over the fire for these things you said like, the what rules, were the things you the just rules. laughed at like i remember laughing at things like on rogan and then you just hear laughter in the back and everyone's like can you believe do you remember i'm gonna find two in the weeds but like certain comics were trying to take down certain people yeah. and they'd be like like they did it to joe when joe we talked about getting his dick sucked and joe yeah. laughed and then they're like can you believe he laughed at that? And you're like, well, we're being outrageous. Yeah. Like, that's part of the thing. <laughs> yeah. The best is when Brad Williams was like, yeah, I fucked a sleeping girl while, uh, who thought I was Carlos Mencia at one point. And they go, that's fucking crazy. And he goes, I'm lying. I never get laid. <laughs> that was the best. Well, we had an, like, we I made it up. I'm an no, idiot. Back then, we didn't, but we shouldn't have because we all knew. We had the conversation like, yeah, this is going to get crazy one day. And then we continue to say the things we said yeah. like assholes. But it's just You too guys late. were fun. You guys were fun to watch from afar. There was a dude, I, I don't, I, I, I can edit this out if you want. 
There was a dude that I followed. He's a comic, I think. I don't know his name. But the biggest bummer one to me, personally, is uh, he was going after Louis. Louis I think, Shane, Louis, Shane, Louis, yeah. and he's just like, oh yeah, I defended I, I, Shane and he blocked. I don't me. know. He okay. does like a, a, a. He was somebody who I just. Well, he was going after Shane Gillis. Yeah. Recently? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like just goes, just it was like when Louis did his podcast. He'll say he'll say a sexual assaulter and a racist. Like you're whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, very first like, of all, he's about to say he's honest to God. One of the people who I've been got to know in comedy through the years I've been doing it, where I'm like, that's an awesome one for me because I'm like, I just love this guy. When I was younger, I just oh, thought his dude. comedy was hilarious. It's hilarious. I still think he's hilarious. It bums me out. Bums me out. Cause fucking Shane. Obviously, Shane's one of my favorite human beings alive. And Louis, I just had Louis on my on two bears. I love Louis too. I mean, I, I, those are like really great dudes. I love the fact that we, like, we've all, like, even the media is just like, all right, fine, Louis. You had enough time off. Come back. Yeah. Get in there. Do the garden. No, the he's old still, pervert. Oh, 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 he'll get, he just he'll, he'll, still, get the, yeah, he'll yeah. still get the stuff he gets to do. I but think he'll, I think he Louis, always, Louis he will will always have haters full, now. I think Louis will have a full comeback to television, award, like uh, Academy Awards, movies. I think he's yeah, on the a trajectory. The thing is that back. Louis, whatever, the punishment he that he had to. to deal with, which, uh, that can never be repaid is that, he got taken out in his prime yeah. money making A list years. In and his so all those green years. Green lit if you walk in yeah. the room. And your so idea that, is green lit. He, he has to dock his yacht half the year now. But here's the th <laughs> but here's the thing also with a person like Louis. Louis like can all he can always make insane money staying low key in the sense of just like staying out of like the Oscars and all that stuff. And it's yeah. probably if I were him, I'd be like, "Am I going to put all that work in the movie?" I mean, that yeah, movie, but it's about that movie, is, the money is that at, at this gone. point. Louis, Louis, I think what, Louis, all that me. money he spent, that movie, that black and white he did with uh, with uh, Chloe Grace Moretz and uh, yeah, call her daddy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like it's a race from history. That's a podcast <laughs> oh, for real. Yeah, yeah, it's like a race from history. <laughs> um, yeah, I know, but I'm saying like I think Louis, <laughs> Louis' personal greatness, like he want, like he's he was considered by everyone as the best comic, right? And he was winning awards. He had the best TV show. He was making the best, he was going into making movies. Like he was gonna start winning awards on those yeah. movies. I think that it's almost like a fucking athlete where it's not even about the money, it's about greatness, it's about championship rings, it's about being the best. Yeah. And I think Louis has that mindset. I don't know Louis that well. I know him well enough. I did, I did Joe List movie with him and I've had yeah. the you know the privilege of hanging out with him a handful of times. I think he's I don't remember brilliant. seeing that scene. Yeah, it was deleted. It's fine. Um, <laughs> You're the credits though. <laughs> well, I wonder how many Louis Gomez is in credits. <laughs> That's me. Catering. I'm a Tim in that Rebel Wilson movie, and I they they deleted my two scenes, and I'm eighth listed in the credits. It's hilarious. But Louis, There's, I think Louis, I, the reason he would want to go for that is because I mean. That's like why leg he did legacy like, shit. Like, just you want it. You want to be the fucking best. You want to see if you can be the best. But he can really. He can still be I'm the best numbers him. wise, and still just numbers and, don't really mean shit. Ever. He can still do. That's neither here nor there. He'll go he's do want, arenas. He, he just he'll, want. A, he just want a Grammy. Yeah, yeah I know for his yeah, album, yeah, but yeah. he'll do it for movies, for television shows. I don't know. He won oh, the Grammy. Oh, no, no, no. I just he. I think he got nominated again. To be honest with you, for sorry. Yeah, yeah. Was it? There was almost like a thing with him that was gonna come to a head either way, even if it wasn't for all the shit that came out. Where it was like he was adored by like the Huffington Post crowd. Like yeah. they loved him, even though his comedy was like so fucking raw. And now you see, like after that, even like Chappelle who never had a fucking scandal like that or anything, but he'll get shit from all those guys. Yeah. Like they almost were gonna have to turn on Louis whether that came or not, because like the rules changed where you're not allowed to do offensive comedy like that anymore. Yeah, oh, yeah. So like yeah, at a yeah. certain point, they would have had to be like, actually, we don't really love those five specials that we told you we loved. Like, <laughs> yeah, we crazy. actually we think they're problematic. are so astute. I listened to him on Rogan on the flight here today. And it, it's really fascinating, those two men, because Rogan starts talking about polar plunges and Louis goes, Louis starts pointing out do you realize how <laughs> ludicrous that is? Like what, when you talk about life, there are people who are slaves making iPhones and, and you're talking about polar plunges and saunas. And he goes, that, that I'm not, he was just the average American. And it was like such a really interesting conversation of watching Louis. Especially because Rogan is like, he, his thing, if you were to sort of like put your, if you were to like give the elevator pitch on what Joe Rogan is, it's like, he's the every man. Yeah. He's the guy that everyone can see themselves in, but it is also like he does shit that no nobody's doing, dude. Yeah. Well, he's 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 uh, he's at the front lines of longevity. He's like, you want to be a better man? 
bow hunt a moose for dinner. <laughs> yeah, to kill your own dinner, <laughs> choke somebody out <laughs> like, as a high level black belt, go do a polar plunge. Yeah. Just today, I broke a guy's arm. I killed a mountain lion with my bare hands. <laughs> it's, it's just, sort of, but it's like not an everyman, but that's still sort of his thing somehow. I have no idea how. He was, he, well, he was a, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm talking shit about Joe. He was a hardcore everyman as a millionaire. Like he didn't give a fuck about watches, didn't give a fuck about like he liked cars, but n never flew private. Never thought it was a waste of fucking money. That's like the Joe I knew. And then three hundred seventy five million dollars later, it's like <laughs> I think I'll fly it's, private. It's, 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 I think I like watches too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he goes, hey, what time is it? Huh? Yeah. Watch yeah. Time. I think that should be what you, know, you do. You should be, you should give a Rolex to your first three guests that you have in the new studio. That would be a nice little are. gift. Whoever whatever, they are, whoever they are, are we be. the first three? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. That's so crazy. That'd be, that'd be Bert, cool, though. We would always remember this. <laughs> Jay, I want you to. I want you to have this. <laughs> the uh, I was trying to give you a Super Bowl ticket, Jay. You're still sitting. Oh on it. shit! Who was it? Who? When I hear a story recently, someone said Kid Rock came into like a room and hung out with them. And Gate was this during? Might have been Shane. Oh, Shane. It's Shane. Yeah, yeah I gave a. They gave a fucking Kid Rock gave a guy his watch. And says something goes, hey man, here you go. He gave it to a person, and then the guy was like, whoa. And they looked up the watch. It's like an eighteen dollar watch. <laughs> and they go, oh yeah, he just does that. Rogan like, it's funny Rogan to give people what their watches. So it's like hilarious. Hilarious. But, they, but they say it wasn't, it wasn't him Freeman. trying to. Oh really? Rogan gave it like on the podcast. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't have a watch. He goes, oh, you like this watch? And took it off, and gave it to him. Yeah. And I was to like, who? to Lex Friedman. And so everyone, I think everyone after that was going on Joe's podcast. Like, hey, can I have a watch? <clears throat> yeah. So you go, hey, Joe, thanks for having me. Uh, what time is shit? Uh, <laughs> yeah, is right. Lex Friedman the one that had the thing with Kanye? We've been on for a while now. How? <laughs> <laughs> is that the uh, that's the guy that had the thing with Kanye? Right? No. Yes, he had. Yeah, well, he's he like, I gotta tell you, buddy. Yeah, I don't get it with the Jews thing. Well, that's not his voice exactly. It's much more robotic. It's much more like Lex Friedman. And I don't, I don't Friedman. understand why it can't be the individuals. He's just a machine. Lex Friedman's an in, he's an interesting dude. I, I got yeah. really deep into him. He uh, I mean, his in, Superman's his, arch nemesis. His <laughs> his podcast with Mark Norman's fascinating because he really gets into Mark Norman's autism, <laughs> and you like really breaks down like what makes Mark tick. He's like Mark. And, let me ask you a question. Six seven eight. <laughs> Six seven eight. Seven eight nine. Seven eight nine. <laughs> um, just starts getting him on the fritz. Do you? Can I tell you? See your time. What uh, the? I well, the one complaint I hear about Mark Norman from almost every LA comic rapist. <laughs> That's things no me. That's, right, that's where I was going with Sigma? it too. What sociopath? <laughs> no, is his crowd work stuff. What's the problem with it? They're everyone. I've had so many comics bring it up to me. They're like. You know Mark Norman? And I was like, yeah, he goes, he posts these crowd work clips. I got people yelling out shit at my shows. Because <laughs> Mark uh, is Mark does work, him and Sam, as they do like a Q&A. So everyone they don't burn does material. that. It's not just Mark. That's like a thing. Yeah. That you're, you're just probably disconnected from like the younger, younger comic generation. Is that what they are? That's a new, th no, but they're like, they're I hear every young comic. About this. Every young you've, comic. You've heard it? I've heard complaints about not Mark. I reckon everyone's it just putting out crowd work. It's clips. just it's not yeah. good crowd work. Mark's is good. Mark's, Mark's is really Sam's good. Are great. Mark's these are brilliant Sam, comics. Yeah. But the thing that young comics do now is they put out these crowd work clips, and it's really bad baseline bullshit crowd work. Yeah. And it's just to get content out. And it's just sort of like, you know, it just it just makes the average comedy come off like it sort of sucks. You know, yeah. um, well, comedy it's, like it's stand up comedy. Like, look, we have something to improvise on. We have podcasts. We figured out the medium, and maybe there'll be another medium. The whole crowd work in a club thing is sort of like, unless that's what you do. Yeah. If you're headlining, you want to kill fifteen minutes, ten minutes. You're doing an hour, like to talk to the crowd, figure out some new I shit. Don't sit on a stool. Stand up. You're fucking Sorry, doing an eight minute set Jay. in a bar, dude. You're doing and eight. when it comes to gloves, get fingers on them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bert, it's I'm not steal another full. blunt. Yeah, please, please. It's yeah. not always full glove weather. It's not always full glove weather. No, um, yeah, I, I've heard a bunch of people going, "Hey, man, uh, you're friends with Mark, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and uh, and they're like, Can, "What's what's up with the crowd work shit?" I got people yelling shit out of my shows. I go, "That's what he does, though. That's what he does." Here's the thing that bothers me a little bit because I've I've gotten this critique from a lot of comics is every comic should know you can't tell anyone what to do on stage. The second you go on stage, whatever you want to do is whatever you do, and you can't. Critique a comic. I've had comics ask me to keep my shirt on. They go, hey, man, if you're going up, can you keep your shirt on? And I'm like, what? Yeah. Wait, in yeah. what capacity did they ask you? Like, they're on the show they're with on, you? They're on after me. And they go. Like, but like at like the store or something. Yeah. I've had comics at the store 
t- asked me not to tell certain lately? jokes. Lately? Uh, no, not lately. Well, I haven't been to the store lately, really. But well, I mean, I, like, wh- no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last five years. Definitely last five years. I've told some young female comedians to not wear underwear. Is that like the same thing? <laughs> same, 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 same. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I've never, I don't like when people say that when I go, they go, they always be like, I do a lot of crowd work, but you know, I'm, I'm with you, so I won't. I'm like, do whatever you do. Man. Yeah. I've had a lot, uh, like, um, like local hosts of yeah. the show ask me what topics they can't do. That's Which right. is like, there must be a lot of people telling them there's topics they can't Well, you know, that was one of my oh, favorite, like, that was one that of my that was one of my favorite things ever that made me do. laugh. What, but what a shitty thing to do to like a young comic who's like probably, they're they're excited to be hosting a weekend at a real comedy you, you club. Ask they probably have about. 10 minutes of good material. And you're going to be like, oh, stay away from all these topics. You like, got to ask that Metzger sucks. about when him and Doug Sunier opened up for Screech. Doug? Signe, we love Doug. I Sunier. haven't heard that name in so long. At least a decade. I fuck red dude, I Canadian. Have the funniest <laughs> Doug Signe story. Wait, Doug Signe. Am I thinking of the right guy? Red Canadian redhead guy. No, He's not Canadian. No, He's Doug Signe is from Boston. Boston. He's not. Yeah, He's yeah, not yeah, yeah, Boston. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Doug Signe. He used to open for like Schimmel for a while. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we worked at the Boston Comedy Club, this is a long. He go a long time ago. So I apologize if I'm glad you have this because I don't remember what I was going to say. But the, oh, wait, 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 let me actually let me finish that because it was it's on point what we were saying. Screech's wife comes in the room before the show to Curtin Doug Sunier and she goes, "All right, guys, uh, real quick, no jokes about Walmart's grandmas or farts. Have fun out there. <laughs> like, Walmart's grandmas or farts. farts. <laughs> no joke because Screech is going to cover those. <laughs> so you can't do. I can't them. believe he's dead. Screech isn't that crazy? I can't believe Jared's still in jail. Like Subway Jared is still in jail. Really? Yeah. What did he even do? I defended Jared. I don't remember why. I was, I was like, you know what? Dude? He had child a, porn on his computer first. Oh yeah. Well, you know, maybe trafficking. Maybe I shouldn't have defended Jared. <laughs> trafficking is really weird. It's it's basically sending someone. To, I could be wrong. Sending someone a ticket and going, hey, why don't you come over to Boston? I'm in Boston this weekend. If they cross, and if they cross lines. straight lines, but she was underage. Yeah, she was underage. Well, I think that's, that's more really the issue. The- <laughs> that's the issue. That's the issue. But he goes, sure, I fucked a child, but I didn't import them. <laughs> <laughs> Locally sourced everybody. <laughs> she goes, uh, she crossed an imaginary border. <laughs> I, I just can't believe Jared's still in jail. Like I, I think about that. Sometimes. If I knew it was going to be this big a deal, I like what the fuck are in her house. Do you think he got fat again? Have we Jared's seen still- Jared? Jared since they oh, still yeah. they make I, him wear the big pants still <laughs> in jail. Hey, do you have a picture of Jared Halston? Now I wonder. There must be a picture of Jared now. He's got that'd be, be great. He's got like Max Katie fucking like scales of justice on his back, just cranking <laughs> out fucking <laughs> chin-ups. He's got a, he's got fucking white supremacist tattoos. You know, Segura was almost this guy. He was almost the almost subway, a child, right? He was almost, yeah. he was almost Jared. <laughs> wow, thank God for have a Christina P. I guess, huh? But just to be clear, you mean the spokesman for Subway? Yeah. Because supposed to be Jared has a whole different connotation now that he's no. a pedophile. Oh, That's wow. Now? Oh, shit. This is what happens when he doesn't have Subway because sandwiches. They make me shave my face and <laughs> eyebrows so I can get <laughs> skull fucked. Does he have no faces? Dude, is that a Louis joke where he's like, how good must child pussy be? Because we yeah. keep on going for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it must be so great. Jared. Let's just steer clear, guys. What did Jared do for real? Like, I know that... He f- he must. Have I think they found. I thought they found kids. shit on his computer. That's what look I thought. Up, he had like look a look hard drive. I, I have no interest in fucking a child. What did Jared Fogel do? I'm so glad I don't. Says he. You know, uh, appears yeah. like somewhere. when people say to me like, "Oh, I don't really drink." I always look at them like, "That must be nice." Child like, sex. Where, where they go? I don't really care about it. I don't. don't child sex <laughs> tourism. So that means he did. Oh, he was just things. visiting. Like he went. Yeah, he went to like uh, <laughs> fucking. That's great. Like Venezuela and fucked uh, thirteen year old lady boys. Convicted of child sex. What is child sex tourism? Can we find out what exactly yeah. what happened with Jared? That's going to like he went over Vietnam and fucking children. They just Wait, let you out. Can't Ga- do that. They just let out Gary. <laughs> Glitter. Do you know they just let out Gary Glitter for that? He just got out. Gary Glitter was. Wait was a minute. Was. Hold on. You can't go to a place where it's legal to have sex with a child. Well, you know, we were just in. That's I, crazy. I was, Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> 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 
uh, towards the person engaging in prostitution of children, which is commercially facilitated child sex abuse. Wow, dude. I by the way, I legitimately I'm not on Kid Fuck Island though. I'm not I'm not obviously condoning. I was it, playing on Kid Fuck Island rules. But I assumed that the, I figured that was a loophole for pedophilia. <laughs> <Yeah>. When <laughs> in <laughs> Kid Fuck Island, right? Do it was when the you Kid go Fuck to Islanders. Somalia, they're like, no, 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 you can fuck the kids here. <laughs> yeah. I, well there's like Vietnam or like um Thailand, what are they, no, Thailand, Thailand right? Thailand, like yeah. Lady Boys. Lady, yeah, the thirteen-year-olds are wearing fucking fatigues, holding m machine guns in the forest. You could probably fuck thirteen-year-olds there. Oh, I would assume in Sierra Leone. You'd you'd know better about this. Where's uh, where's General Butt Naked from? Uh, well, it's the south side of Sierra Leone. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I know better about this? You always know shit about history and like the world, but not about where you can fuck kids. Dave, I mean, I don't, that's Dave. not my specialty. Dave, like you're working on a book about the behind-the-scenes world of the pedophilia world, and also that was a uh, uh, Book of Mormon reference. What General Butt fucking naked? No, no, General Butt naked was a real dude. Oh, that's uh, General that... Butt naked is now in. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he is exiled and living in like France or something. Okay, so in Book of Mormon, there's a character General called Butt General naked. Butt fucking naked, and I'm assuming and now it's a parody of that. I didn't realize that General Butt naked. So he was the one that would make his people wear wigs. And uh, they'd go in totally naked to scare them. And then they would eat the livers and the hearts of their victims. The original have, liver king. The, the original <laughs> liver king. General Butt Naked is, I think he's in, he's from Liberia. Liberia. Liberia is where uh, slavery was created, correct? I'm not sure. Bert knows anything. Dave. <laughs> Dave, something. This isn't my. Can you tell us something close to anything? Well, you said you were smart, dude. So where do they send? Where do they send the slaves back to? When there was a, like, they gave a, after Costco uh, after like, anything back. after a, not apartheid. Where after they fucking outlawed slavery in the United States, they gave them an African country and yeah, said, "You guys can yeah, go there." Yeah. It's really interesting. Niger. They, no, dude, chill. No. Dude, and chill. This is Burkast. Chill. <laughs> Was it probably Niger? It's a real place, Lewis. Look on Bert's evil glow. <laughs> and so they gave him place, and the and the uh, American slaves went back, and the first thing they did was enslave the locals. Well, I'm on fire. Yeah, you are. You said that you're the first guest here, Lewis. Don't set it on fire. Yeah. Give me a Rolex. <laughs> I'm on fire. They enslaved the locals? I think so. I, I, I like Cannibal Holocaust? I, everything I is drunk history to me, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm fucking... General Butt Naked. Can you tell me something about that, Halston? Booty Butt Naked. Um, <laughs> General Butt Naked, Liberian evangelical <laughs> preacher, writer, and former warlord, best known for his actions during the first Liberian Civil War during the conflict. He led a group of soldiers who fought on the side of rebel group, United Liberation Movement of Lib Damn, man. They fought without clothing and I would hey, that's my biggest Isn't it fear? crazy that this is happening in the world and also new games keep coming up for PlayStation? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, this one's pretty Do you know much what I mean resolved. by that? Yeah. There's a warlord out there and still also like movies get made. One of my biggest fears yeah. is to be like have my house robbed. And this happens all the time in the nude because I sleep naked. I sleep naked too. Completely naked. 100 percent Always. Naked. Always. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Do you know what I do more than anything? In a hotel room by myself. What? I fucking make naked angels in bed. I, I love remember. that. But yeah. at home? No, man. Someone else has to see me. I no. walked. I, I, had a, I had a hotel in Vegas one time. I'd just driven in. I was doing... Uh, uh, Joaquin had a room. Do you remember Joaquin? They used to have a room. Las Vegas uh, Comedy Club. And I was doing... I had a hotel room, and it was hot as fucking shit. And I got totally naked and laid in my bed naked and i just driven in shows in like three hours totally naked on top of the covers and the door opens and it's a dude with a backpack and a bag and i'm naked and i'm just <laughs> laying on the bed and he goes i think this is my room and i went you still want it <laughs> he goes i'm gonna get another room and just walked out it was the weirdest fucking dude shane stayed uh in my room once in tampa because he got locked out of the condo so I was like, well, come stay in my hotel room. And he made himself a bed on the floor and then got down to his complete underwear. So <laughs> just so it was weird. Yeah. I don't know why. I know it's not that Eddie crazy, box. It's not but I just thought it was, I just didn't think it was weird. I, I know it's not that crazy, that but. Crazy. Like, it's definitely not a story worthy of Burt cast. <laughs> no, I mean. No, it's good. It's I'm good. just saying I would absolutely, especially with somebody there. If I was going to sleep naked in a hotel room and a friend was staying over. I would dress like I was trying to impress a chick. <laughs> like I'd wear shorts. Well, one of my biggest fears is that I get robbed and I'm naked and then I have to fight a man <laughs> naked and then either be murdered 
naked or have something happen to my dick. No, but that's Eastern that's, Promises. That's Eastern Promises. Yeah. I was just about to say Eastern Promises. Did you ever see, uh, what's his name, Lenny Bruce, like the, the death picture of him? Uh-uh. Do pull up the picture of dead Lenny Bruce when they found him after a drug overdose. It's one of the things that made me stop doing drugs. Because I was like, I know they're good. this is going to be my life. They're going to find my naked, flabby ass and my little fucking dick. Where is it? There's like a death photo where he's like, they find him naked in a hotel room. You think this is f- Did you just dream this? Maybe it's a fake photo. No, type maybe type in naked. Was that is him? that it? No, that's not it. There's one where it's like a good shot. <laughs> is that what you call it? All right, put in hot dead. Lenny Bruce. Yeah, hot dead Lenny Bruce. No, put, put Lenny put Bruce put cock. Naked, naked dead Lenny Bruce. Maybe that. Add naked to it. I was thinking about that today. If I wanted to be eaten by an animal, do you have cats? That's the ones that'll do it. Like oh, you... crazy. That looks like dead naked Lenny. Bruce. This is what made you stop doing drugs, Lewis. Were you on a lot of drugs yeah. when you saw this? Picture? Hey, Lewis, this is really great for Burkcast. Are you looking? Shut the are, fuck you looking up. <laughs> are you looking at? Are you thinking of Che Guevara? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening? Naked and dead is a bad way to be found for sure. Uh, oh, my think, dick would be so pathetic naked. Well, for me, I found out. It's the least I hard because anytime I'm conscious, I'll be making it a little fluffed. Oh, yeah. If you're ever seeing my dick. It's been prepared. Yeah, it's been prepared. <laughs> yeah. oh, if yeah. I'm dead, there's no prep, doggy. That's it's why I said if I, if I ever, if I ever end up in a coma, kill me. I don't want people to see what's happening <laughs> while I'm in a coma. One time I, I, I locked, I had my bong in my bedroom. I, uh, my, my roommate Forrest had two girls over and uh, I just fell asleep. I was, no, I had the bong in my bedroom and then I fell asleep jerking off. So I was just sleeping with my pants down. <laughs> Not even off, which is looks <laughs> pants down is way worse than pants off. And, it, and then they, they climbed out because they had to get the bong out of my room because I was sleeping. They climbed out on the fire escape and all three of them came to the window and looked and laughed at my naked Horse. dick. My little passed fucking out. passed out dick. Jerked off. It was really a slow. Oh, dude, it was fucking pathetic. I've never passed out jerking off. Yeah. I've I've had I've had I've been jerking off and it went away and i was like just not that into me i guess and i was like eh. i've had that a lot i think it's blood stop, pressure issue. stop jerking off where i was just it's not happening you I, give up yeah, in I'm brazil in brazil times. i was like hung over i used to if i was really hung over i would jerk off in the morning to, you're jerking uh, off in brazil you can go there for child sex yeah it's tourism the uh, <laughs> uh did you ever hear the story patrice told about going to brazil and having sexual prostitutes uh patrice oh, yeah. would have been canceled today oh uh, he would have been canceled though. He would have had a cult of people that he would have had a mat. I don't think you get canceled if you're a black dude. No, if the stuff he did, you know. could. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been interesting to see what he would have done. Oh, he would have been great. I th- I think about. I remember when that's like a tough way to go with that locked in syndrome. Was it what Patrice yeah. had what, after the stroke or whatever? And he just can't talk to anyone. Yeah, it's rough. You but you but you're fucking wide awake oh, like the metallica video it, no that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah just like the metallica video yeah. i can't remember anything <laughs> it's patrice. Kill me. just kill me <laughs> but it's patrice <laughs> <laughs> he's talking in sos <laughs> <laughs> he's saying over and over again kill me kill me <laughs> kill me i was i didn't expect that happen i wish i had some eyes i could read a book George, what was the th- most heartbreaking shit ever is uh, there's a clip of Patrice that the first winner of the is. of the medal Grammy was Jethro Tull, and, and he's Metallica got robbed, and he's sitting there in the audience. Uh, there's this clip of Patrice where he's saying, I don't know what it was like on ONA or something like that, but where he's talking about how his worst fear is uh, not being able to talk. I heard, and that. I think he was saying more like not being able to like give my opinion sure. or something. You know, like his worst fear. I think he meant it in the context of like if I, you know. And making a movie silence. and I'm signed with some company and now I can't say what I want to say. But he just says the words like my worst fear is not being able to talk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just fucked up. I, yeah. I, it, it just sucks to be. No, I would love that. Then I can know what people really think of me. Do you want to be resuscitated? If uh, Do you have a DNR? Um, do not resuscitate order. Like if you get. No, if resuscitate. You're a vegetable, let you die. Resuscitate all day, every day. There's Thank find you. a way. Thank Stay you. Find a way. Thank you. You know that we didn't get to the moon by not resuscitating motherfuckers. Thank you. Bring me back, Fucking bitch. Leanne, we we had to do it in a room. I used to have a bit about this. I think. Are you doing? Are you telling people not to? 
No, or, oh, definitely fucking, resuscitate. Oh, resuscitate. Let <laughs> Terry Shibo me. Like, keep me there forever. <laughs> Doggy. Forever. And suck my dick every day. What if yeah, you feel yeah. it? Every I don't day. Care every if I day. can't feel it. Yeah, I don't care. I will just make, because I, what, what if every way? day you know you're just saying that you're that bored, just is stuck in your own head? You go, if you can't resuscitate me, bury me in the pet cemetery, and whatever comes back, <laughs> you live with that. And suck its dick. <laughs> and suck its dick. I want, Leanne just goes, well, pull the plug. I don't care. Pull the plug. That's Leanne. And I was like, I'm definitely not. Do you want to be buried or do you want to be cremated? Uh, Can I tell you how much anxiety this gives me right now? Right now? Because I think about death all the time. And I think about the idea that it will go black and I will not be aware of it. Yeah, but it's your fucking, it's you, so there'll be a light show anyway. Uh, I I did this. Bert's dead. I did this. I'm going to ask you a question. Midair while being fired from underneath the stage. (laughs) (laughs) He landed bad. You loved him when he was alive. (laughs) I did this podcast in London with this guy, True Jordy. Do you know him? Yeah, yeah. True Jordy's great. He's great. And he asked me a question. This is what a fucking moron I am. Like what a real actual meathead I am. He goes, what do you want to be remembered for when you die? And my answer was, I just want people to go, man, I wish Bert was here. <laughs> like, That's not bad. Like, they, like Bert, this would be more fun if Bert was here. Like, he would have brought shots. And I, and I had so many people hit me up like, you don't want to cure anything or like be remembered for like changing the world at all. And I was like, nah, I just want people to wish I was still there. That's it. Like. I actually, I really like that answer. I like I that. Oh, That's really? not a bad answer. Yeah, I felt like a yeah. moron. I was like, I. I didn't have the good clippable moment that well, like, I was a, a goes, brilliant goes, person. You, you know, not to cure something. You're like, what are you going to cure in your life? Yeah. yeah. You really have to go back to school pretty soon. If yeah. You're cure some fucking... <laughs> hey, you guys remember Bert had that fucking kick-ass <laughs> comedy tour and then for some reason, like, cured COVID? Hair lips? I would hair lips was my thing. I remember first hearing about hair lips. Uh, so, like, because in the middle, in the, in, like, El it's Salvador unfair, it's an unfair area? affliction because some people when they get it fixed look cool you look hot right uh, like Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix or uh, yeah it could be hot on a dude but never on a chick <laughs> you know, like, look at that hot hair that bitch yeah. pull it up I've Austin. never said dude that chick looks sexy with a patch <laughs> on her eye <laughs> well you can put a mustache over it so it looks like yeah there's well, one- I, you know what i used to do my first experience with hair lips this is before people had cell phones like when i was like 19 years old you know what i did i went online and i there was like a you know like donate to this site and it was a bunch of different hair lip kids like that and i printed a picture and i cut it out and I used to keep it in my wallet and i used to tell people i was like oh my my, my niece is adorable here and i would show people the hair lip baby and watch them uncomfortably <laughs> react to it for me for no one else she goes she's gonna be a stunner huh heartbreaker right here and you gotta oh, go this poor bitch mm-hmm um mm-hmm. uh, do you know it's 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 hang on i want to tell you another story before I, I explain this the heart one of the hardest i ever laughed i was in amsterdam and the guy goes you're gonna get this by the way as i as i tell this i go i'm we just got high we sit down for dinner and i go what's good and he goes well pasta our pasta is really good and i said I'll, I'll do that and he goes you want hair in it and i was like huh he goes you want hair in it and i was like no i don't fucking hair in it and he goes okay i go wait hold on you're joking right and he goes no it's really good I go, you go to, whose hair is it? He goes, it's our hair. I go, you put your hair in my pasta? And he goes, yeah, it's, it's really good. You should get it. And I was like, I, I think I'm good. And he goes, I'll put the hair on the side. And if you want, you can put it in. And I'm like, are you fucking with me? And I'm high. It comes out, it's rabbit. Ah, that, yeah. But that's, <laughs> did you know that's what hair lip is from? No, I didn't know. I, it's that's a, it's ra- It's you because that's what a rabbit's lip looks like. Interesting. Oh, did yeah. not know that. That's why well, I was interested. I, thought it was, the, I thought it was because it looked like their lip was split with a hair. I don't know. No, I, 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 it's hair lip because it's it, a fun thing to call people. Some hair lip. What was the? What was the? Uh, what was the? What up, gopher teeth? <laughs> Elephant stomach? No, no, no. Yeah. What's hey, the? What's lip? the? What's the joke? But a hair lip. You remember when you were a kid? The guy, guy walks into a bar. Uh, and s- with a with a wooden eye, and he says, "Do you serve black people here?" <laughs> and he goes, "Would I hair lip, hair lip, hair lip?" You never saw that heard that joke? Mm-mm. I don't know it. Uh, oh fuck! The bartender, guy with the hair lip, walks into a bar. Bartender's got a wood eye, and then the god oh, fuck, I fucking. Never mind. You know what's hilarious? <laughs> no, that's the you best way to tell it. Doing comedy. Right there, hold on. That should be a clip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I remember watching that on on uh on uh on Tough Crowd when Norton would do something to a bomb 
call him and go, no, 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 no. Let's let's enjoy this moment. Let him live in it. Let him live in it. (laughs) This podcast is brought to you by Helix. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. Their lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models and mattresses made for big and tall sleepers and even a mattress made for kids. So how will you know which Helix Sleep mattress works best for you and your body? Very easy. Take the Helix Sleep quiz and you can find your perfect mattress in under two minutes and your personalized mattress will then be shipped directly to your door Free of charge, I'm telling you right now, Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping it in your house. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Everybody's unique, and everyone sleeps different. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. Models with memory foam, layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side like me models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support for stomach and back sleepers like leanne plus enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating all night long like if you're going through menopause and if your spine needs some extra tlc they've got you every helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top it's the perfect combination of comfort and support. I, Bert Kreischer, took the Helix Sleep Quiz and found out that I am a side sleeper. And so I now have a side sleeping mattress because I, I sleep on my side and I feel fantastic. No more waking up with pain on my side going, is my liver falling apart? <laughs> Not only is this the best mattress I've ever slept on, but the setup was so ridiculously fast and easy that it literally took me more time to take the sleep quiz than it did for me to set up the mattress. That's insane. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box straight to your door for free. Plus, Helix mattresses are American-made and come with a 10 to 15-year warranty depending on the model. Don't take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress pick by GQ and Wired Magazine. It's even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as the go-to solution for improving your sleep. Take Leanne's word for it. She freaking loves it. Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Burt. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. I remember when I was a kid and I started shaving, I go through a razor each shave, and my dad lit me up. He was like, do you have any idea how much these cost? I remember saying to my dad, why do razors cost so much? Why isn't someone making incredibly sharp blades made in their own factory in Germany, Dad? And he said, Bert, that's so funny. Harry's razors are ridiculously sharp, incredibly sharp, and made in their own factory in Germany. Most importantly, they cost as little as two bucks per blade. You can get a quality razor you can depend on delivered straight to your door from Harry's. I'm telling you right now, I only shave a few parts of my face. I have this little area right here, right down this side, right down this side, and under here. So, I, I mean, these blades last me forever. Two bucks a little, literally last me like three months. I'm telling you. They were sent to me. They looked beautiful, nice and sleek. I got the steel handle. I got the plastic handle. They were sent to me. They looked beautiful. They're sharp as shit, and I love them. I take them on the road with me, throw them in my dob kit. I'm telling you. Get a quality shave without the hassle with a $3 Harry's trial set. The Truman Shave trial set is a 15 dollar value for just three dollars at harrys.com slash bert it includes a five blade german engineered razor weighted handle foaming shave gel and a travel cover plus you can schedule replacement blades delivered whenever you need them with refills as low as two dollars there are dozens of affordable items to go along with your subscription like shaving creams post shave balm body washes hydrating lotions and more and they're still offering a no risk trial don't like your shave? Don't worry. It's on them. Don't get overcharged for razors. Get Harry's. Get a $15 Truman Shave trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash Burt. That's harrys.com slash Burt for a $3 trial set. I miss Tough Crowd. Yeah. we did, was... At Skankfest, we did the Tough Crowd reunion. No. Uh, with yeah, Colin? The Brooklyn Bazaar with Colin. Yeah, with Colin, Bobby, Jim Norton, Norton. Keith. 
Uh, so none of the good guys. Yeah, well, they're all dead. <laughs> all the good ones are dead. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, we Bobby a holo- was a hologram. Geraldo. Yeah. We saw it. We seanced. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, that was fucking. That was great. We're 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 doing something pretty cool. We can't say it, obviously. It's a, but it's a, a little reunion thing that we're doing this year at Skankfest. That oh, it's not announced. So Mike show. Tyson and that girl that accused him of rape. <laughs> <laughs> is it, face uh, to face in the ring one last time. Who's someone you want to get for Skankfest that you that you haven't been able to get? Cosby. Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, he's on tour right now. We're reaching out. Is he actually on tour? Is yeah. that official? He yeah. I, I remember he tickets. said he was going to do it, but I, I, don't know, I would go see him. On it. Can we go see him? Would you guys go see him? Oh, 100%. I would. Okay. I'd be so we interested have, to see Bert him. Bert would have to disguise. I would, I would, I would, go on blackface. I would, yeah. Man. Have a great <laughs> with that face. Slide in. Man, I hope he talks about his brother Russell. <laughs> the, uh, I, w- I would love to see him. I would love to see him. He's crazy. You know he's going to talk about it. He has to. No way. I bet he doesn't talk about it. I bet he doesn't address it at all. He does like two hours. Guy. How do you do two hours and not address it? He's not so wait, that so guy. Wait, would, is that, would you see Cosby? I would go see him just to see what 100%. he's like. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A yeah. thousand times, yes. Dude, I, we could just buy tickets. I don't even understand what would be the moral issue with that. It's not like I'm, you know, he's going to rape more people because I bought a ticket. Yeah. Well, it's like I just want to you know, see I want to see well, yeah. I think he's just planning the tour. I don't think they were actually officially on the tour. If, he, if he went on fucking tour, would Ticketmaster sell his tickets? Like, there would be, like, I would love to see how they do oh, this. Everyone yeah, relax. He can't fuck anymore. He can't rape. You're if you get raped by Cosby at this point, you are weak. You wanted it. And you should be weeded out of the fucking. <laughs> it doesn't even matter how you were dressed. This you is crazy, it, dude. dude. You got raped by Bill Cosby. Because, well, he offered me a drink. You took the drink? <laughs> it's Bill Cosby. <laughs> Bill Cosby. It's Bill Cosby. <laughs> I woke up five hours later. He was on the floor because he tripped over trying to take his sock off. <laughs> Bill Cosby's like, I see. Because th- he got that wonky eye. He's like, I see three of them. Like, rape the one in the middle. Fuck rape the, the one, one in the middle. In the middle. <laughs> At this point, you're just uh, rooting for Cosby. It's like an underdog story. Uh, I know. Yeah. She goes, oh, God, look at him crawling up my legs. Oh, my God. I'm going to see his if rap- I can push it. Andrew Wyatt confirmed a variety that the community is looking for spring, summer to start touring. Uh, Andrew Wyatt. I mean, do Andrew Wyatt, God bless his soul. Like, who who's else is he with? Who's he with? He's got to be his. How, how does he have an agent? I don't. How much would it cost us? It's <laughs> crazy. You know, you know, there's got to be someone at like fucking WME who's like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go in with somebody. We never thought Robert Downey Jr. was going to have a comeback. <laughs> I want to walk into a show with, like, you know, the girl who played Sandra or something. I want to come in with, like, somebody where we turn heads. A Raven Simone. Raven Simone. Uh, Louis came to my, what was, I was in Minneapolis and we were right next door to each other. And I texted him and I said, hey, man, want, come over if, if you have, a, he had one show and I had two. I said, come over and hang out, have a drink, bring everyone your, from your crew over. So we came over, we're having a drink in between shows, and uh, and I go, hey, do you want to go up for me? And he was like, are, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. I go, yeah, Louis, I don't give a fuck. And by the way, I don't, like, you've, he's always been kind to me. I was like, I'm, what am I going to turn my back on you? And I was like, no, yeah, Louis. I go, Louis, I don't care. I go, if it doesn't bother me. And he goes, okay. And he goes on stage, and I realized he wasn't asking if I was sure because he had been canceled, he was asking because he's Louis really fucking CK me? and I couldn't follow him. No. I fucking took my shirt off and they're like, nah. like Louis has his shirt on. He destroyed for fucking 10 with minutes. With his of, fucking shirt on. With his shirt on. With his fucking shirt on. He destroyed so his fucking his hard. It was insane. I went out and it took You me. should have, the reaction was so bad, you put your shirt back on. You go, yeah. And you go, nothing. You go, put it back on, take it back off. Yeah. <laughs> One more time. Yeah. Oh, my God. oh, maybe you guys didn't see. Uh, take your shoe off. <laughs> Dude, that was my favorite thing in the world was the, remember the black shows in New York when the, Host would do the reintroduction of themselves. No, the, like they was so planned in the show, Dave. You've seen these before with me. It's so planned oh, in yeah. the show. They're gonna do this. Like no matter what, the audience could have gone. I mean, fucking bat shit when they first came out, losing their minds, screaming, it, and they always come out and go. Man, y'all got to do better than that, man. I came too. F- it's always like they give these. I did. Uh, I did laundry for this. I got something, something. I got babysitting for my kids. Y'all got to do better than that. And then to go back off stage and be like. All right, motherfuckers. Now coming to the stage, and they have to like lose their. It was built in. Yeah, to Sol- it's a solid bit. <laughs> it's great I left bit. my family for this. Dude, our best. I I think 
personally, probably my favorite Skankfest uh, story. The, my favorite Skankfest memory is uh, Louis C.K. doing oh, yeah. the festival. He did it the, in the midst of his cancellation. It was his first American appearance. First, first he had time done he Europe, did he did like Paris a few shows. Yeah. So he came, but he, yeah. So he came, uh, whatever this is, 2018, 2019, whatever the year was. 2019. And, was. We, and he came, he just came because uh, Joe List was That's what on, all of those girls said. He, he, said he, first, came, he said at first but he, he asked, wasn't going to go on. He, he asked if we wanted him to come and then he came. So I think it's cool. Uh, but he's, uh, he, um, so, so Joe list was there and he brought, wait, 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 wait. was that a joke? That yeah, I, that was okay, a joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but cause I asked, I asked Steve-O if he wanted to see my dick one time and he goes, yes. And I go, well, that, wait, that's not consent anymore. No, that's we still... need to really make this clear. I go, you have to beg to see my dick. And he goes, please see your dick. I said harder. And he goes, I want to see your dick so bad. And I was like, all right, here you go. That's the, that's the new standard now. But so he came uh, just cause list was there. And I think Joe had told us, he was like, Hey, Louie wants to like pop by, but it was just like, he's going to pop by and like hang out. Yeah. So, and he came and it seemed like you could feel on him that he was a little bit uncomfortable, which was such a weird thing to watch because you're watching like the greatest comedian of our time, debatably, yeah. being uncomfortable in his skin around like us at our little thing that yeah. we do. And I think, was it you asked that you were like, dude, do you want to go on for a little bit or someone at? No, he said he, no at first. And he then said no. And he then he saw the like the, the crowd was like, you know, a scam. Yeah. Well, say so he watched, watched the tell go on. The greatest comedy crowd ever and a tell goes on. And then- he uh he was like fine I'll I'll go up and you could I could I remember watching him and just being like this is amazing to see this like one of the greatest comedians ever being a little bit like this is all right this is the first time I'm going yeah. back up since after all this and he went on and I mean the it was maybe four minute Louis chant yeah, before he told his first TMG joke picked it up I, uh, it, it was uh, and then he crushed Bert, can I say it was beautiful about this yeah. so our audience is I mean. They fucking get it on such a level. We don't have to say it. Not a single person took out their cell phone. Nobody is sort of recording a set. Yeah. Not a single person. The only video was me recording him coming on stage, and then I cut it as soon as he grabbed the microphone. Um, and that's what TMZ picked up on. But it was like a really fucking like just incredible moment, and you just had to be there. And you he know? did the thing. And we got a lot of hate for that as well. By the way, we lost the venue. So we what? the venue came out and gave yeah. a public statement. By the way, the venue loved it at the time. Staff from the venue were racing. You saw staff you, members like, racing staff. from behind the bars to come out and watch Take pictures it. with they, them. They were like Jumping so excited. Jumping and cheering when he went. Cheering. Everyone yeah. loved Jumping it. So they, they released a statement because it's, it's Brooklyn. There's these, these local shitty publications that have, it doesn't even matter. It's like... It, for a venue to get so nervous so quickly, like they they were like, oh, you know, we did not know who was going to be in. They brought him in through the back door, and we were like, you they know, wrote go this, fuck yourself. They wrote that the staff felt uh, the staff uh, felt uncomfortable. Like uncomfortable. You're like the ones who were I'm jumping like, for yeah, joy. I mean, they, they felt were, uncomfortable. They lost their minds with excitement. I watched it. Yeah. yeah. So, but here's the thing: the amount of the amount of press that came with that, and people don't realize like the negative press. It's just as, as valuable as the positive press. So it created like a big conversation back and forth about you know is, is it okay for Louis to come back? The relevancy of Skankfest. I mean, I think that was one of the moments that legitimately put Skankfest on the map as like holy shit, it's something yeah. that people you have to be there because you're going to see some amazing moments like that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, and of was, course, because Lewis owns the thing. They were like, well, the venue doesn't want to uh, have you guys here again next year. And Lewis was like, great, go fuck yourself. We'll yeah. go somewhere else yeah. next year. Like, but it was, but, but no, they were but for sale. The moment, venue was, that was bullshit. But just as a, as, as a comedy moment, it was like to watch him go to, and it, he, he destroyed and it was so funny. Like he had just, I think he had, he did the bit that he ended up working on to his next special where he addresses the whole situation. Yeah. You know, where he was like, he was like, oh, well, yeah. how was your year? <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh my. And uh, he said the thing where he goes, well, here's what I learned. If uh, someone asks you, <laughs> if you ask if you can jerk off in front of someone, do they say yes? Still don't do it. And like yeah. that whole thing. It was just so funny and it was great. And you could kind of see like this comedy legend kind of having like his spirits picked back up by that yeah. crowd. And that was just so- With humility just, too. I yeah, mean, that's it was really, awesome. And like, you know, you know, here's the truth. Here's what's funny about the Louis thing is like, we all knew the rumors about Louis for years, right? Yeah. And yeah. The we thought it was so I, cool. But listen, but listen the, Wait, rumor, no. <laughs> the rumor <laughs> was- parties. Do you remember when Stan Hope jumped the, on the listen, the, the rumor was worse than the reality. So yeah. the rumor was that Louis like held the door closed, wouldn't let these girls leave. And everyone was still cool with it. Everyone still wanted to work with him. All these yeah. bitches, there's a lot of chicks who like came out against Louis. Well, because everyone was like, just a 
bald ginger guy, fight through it if you didn't want. Yeah, <laughs> but then the, the story came out when he he asked, and he like you know it was more about him abusing his power and his position. Well, I have to say this only because I I'd never worked in a uh, at a business before, but when I did when I did the movie, there was a day where I where it just kind of dawned on me, like I was watching a dude hit on a chick, and I was like, I, and I wanted to say something like, hey, you can't do that, like. We're all working. Like, don't, but it, it's Serbia, so it's, there's different rules, you know? Yeah. Like, they, there is different. I mean, Me Too did not hit Serbia the way it did America. And it dawned on me, and I, I've said this before. I don't you know. You still take what's rightfully yours out there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I said, uh, but I, it, I was driving home that day, and I was like, oh, yeah, that is a really fucked up ask. Like, at work, it is a, it is a really fucked up ask to be like, at work where you're supposed to be safe going like and i was like oh yeah i, I don't think i put as much weight on it when it came out because i was like but he did ask but and then i and then once i it was in a work environment i was like oh yeah you're not allowed to ask yes and it's fucked yeah. up I, I agree that it's creepy and you shouldn't do it yeah. however that's kind of what turned him on he's a fucking little freak do people I, I like fucking in public like I I, honestly like i, I I'll, like i i like to me and my chick yeah. sometimes we'll just be in a fucking public place we're like let's just go let's yeah but, that, but, you, but you realize how that that could be yep, mr gomez this is a pta meeting yeah. <laughs> but i'm just saying like, how's james doing in math <laughs> <laughs> but what, however your however your freak flag flies yeah so that was sort of where I, my you know i think it falls into the category of kink shaming i think louis well, Okay, and then Army Hammer. I like. I looked at him, and I was like, I was like, That's so not- what? He likes to eat a bitch every now and again. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but like, I couldn't understand. And I, I don't do all the research, so I don't. I just read the fucking headline, and then I go, if that's your thing, <laughs> like, well, then how fucked are you? Yeah, maybe. But you're so who, but like people are creeps sometimes, and a women are creeps. Women are creeps. Yeah, just I'm not going to defend as, the army hammer creeps. thing. But Louis C.K. I'll defend. But no, I'm saying women are creeps <laughs> just as often as men are creeps. People have their own weird sexual kinks, and they they like to get off in whatever way they like to get off. And I always sort of chalked it up to that because he was asking for consent. And here's the reality: No, I run a few businesses now. I run I run a gas I run Gas Digital, and I run Skank Fast. We have a, we have a few businesses yeah. that have sprouted yeah. off of it. If one of the dudes that was a higher up started trying to hook up even if the chick was into it i'd go whoa don't let me fucking see it not yeah. at work right yeah so that's the responsibility it's like you have to sort of like look you, you make your bed and you lie in it if you really want to fuck chicks you work with yeah well you might deal with some shit so how much do you want to fuck chicks well, you want to fuck chicks? Also- do you want to make a lot of money and that's sort of where we're at i think in society where it's like look i'm a creep but i want to be successful more than i want to be a creep thank god yeah. i don't care about <laughs> i was just saying thank god those girls- that i don't want to be a creep <laughs> no, but, no, no, but, you, no but i'm on the same page as you thank god i don't care enough about pussy yeah, but if if it if, is. if if alcohol could me to you, oh my god, oh yeah, you'd be, be the things you've done fucked. to alcohol. <laughs> I would be fucked. I lie to myself sometimes. Like yeah. I go on the plane today, I was like, no booze. I'm gonna be partying with these guys later today. We're gonna do two shows, no booze. Guy comes by and goes, can I get you a drink? And I go, uh, double jack on the rocks. <laughs> and I went, what am I doing? I go, it's just one big guy. And then I drank it, and I go, that one didn't put a dent. And he comes back and goes, can I get another one? And I just went, uh huh. And I didn't even know I did it. And I was like, oh, this is fucking not. This is replying to the, in the DMs going, just come to my show. That's, that, I mean, like, if you're yeah. addicted to pussy, that's what you do. I get it. I, I, I'm, and I'm, yeah, I was addicted. I mean, you know, I guess I still am addicted to pussy. I just have a regular pussy How many pussy chicks have you had sex with? I don't know. I, mean, I literally, I, I have no pussy idea. Pussy for me was my i never was drugs and very it was pussy you and i we have a set but drugs too for me and alcohol and all of it really really put it in front of me i'm gonna want to fuck was your first okay was your first experience sexually good yeah it was cute it was like a relationship was it in life ever you mean yeah yeah. first losing your virginity it was a goth girl it was to pantera cemetery gates on repeat for like three hours because i couldn't come was wearing a condom you couldn't come couldn't come oh that's an interesting Puerto Ricans don't understand condoms and their dicks get confused. <laughs> it was crazy. And then I think I never wore a condom again after that. I was like, this is nuts. I'm they're not born doing to this. breed, you see. I, I I hate to get all Jane Goodall here, yeah. but they're born to breed. <laughs> 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 I, I, I've lived amongst them. Hey, uh, if someone's listening, can I get another beer? Oh, the, can I have another beer also? Yeah, please. yeah, another one here too. By the way, this bourbon's great, whatever it is. I don't know. I see it on the counter. St. Augustine, is it? Wait, for real. Do you like the set up this is great I, I think it's incredible shut up, shut up Bert. do you like it shut up Bert. 
You have a mansion that's your podcast <laughs> studio. You make me sick. No, I. Oh, it's uh, not a mansion. It's just a nice house. Whatever. Gas whatever. Digital is a stuff. shithole basement. I hate my life. This I remember going sucks. to Gas Digital. Does your podcast studio have a pool? I'm going to throw this glass against the wall if it does. Gas Digital is double the size. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, we've, we've doubled amazing. in size since you've been there. For real? But they it is the great. Place next but door this is yeah, not. It's awesome. Well, I was I went to I went to um Segura Studio, your mom's house studios. Oh, fuck yeah. They really inspired me. I was it's like, great. wow, that's they, great, the way they have studio. it set up. Oh, yeah, Dr. Drew, See, I look, yeah. I look at awesome. it, I look at it like I don't I don't have any interest in adding podcasts though. Like I don't have an interest in Give me a room, Bert, please. I, I will you. actually if you give the Legion of Skanks a room here, yeah. we could decorate it as the Legion of Skanks West Coast Studios. We'll be here all the time, dude. We'll do crazy shit for you. I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd love Let's it. Let's go. You guys are doing. You, I, I need underage porn on the walls. <laughs> yeah. The and even though you're the head of the network, you can hit on any of us. Did, you, hear, you, want did to. you hear about the? Do you know a guy? I, I'm, I just learned about him. I've known about this guy for a while. Adam Twenty Two. Yeah. Yeah. We had him yeah. on, dude. We he has the, the most brilliant. I just lost podcast the, well, in the fucking world. I know. It's better than Jay's I, podcast. I just lost an AVN award to him. I went to the AVN oh, porn awards. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he I has that. him and his. So for anyone that's not listening, him and his girlfriend Lena the plug. Yep. Interview a porn star, and then fuck her. Yep. She Rules. holds. I mean, she holds, I, I'm, I I'm, mean, a, I'm a subscriber to their OnlyFans. Talk his about girlfriend, a fucking workaround. His girlfriend. This holds guy's his a wiener. fucking genius. Yeah. Yeah. His girlfriend holds his wiener and guides it into some other chick's pussy. Oh, is that? Dude, that, that oh my god. Yeah, he fucks. He fucks some pretty high level ones too. It's not even. Oh, I've jacked to it plenty of that one. Yeah, I've and we had him on the pod. I started jacking more. And he's got after, a nice piece. After I met him, I started jacking more to it because then I could put myself there. I was like, now I know his personality. I can sort of like. And it's all on his OnlyFans. Is him fucking these yeah. porn stars? Yeah. What did you, how much do you think he has to pay them? Do you think he pays them or do you think? Yeah, he, I think oh, he, pays I, them I think he probably sure. pays them whatever their rate is for a daily porn rate. They probably get paid the the st the standard. Yeah, a couple grand. Whatever maybe. their their version of like like a uh, you know after minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you know a couple grand, three grand. No jumper is the name of his original podcast. He was on Skanks. He was great on Skanks. Yeah, really? Yeah, and he 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 was very honest. He was like, dude, I had like apprehension because I heard about this podcast. After I said I was going to do it, people were like, dude, don't do that podcast. Those guys are fucking lunatics. Um, but it's crazy so, world that people are warning yeah. this guy yeah, about our like, podcast. Just fucking, like, you just fuck on just camera. Like, he's covered, fucking, his face is covered in tattoos. <laughs> You're made for this. Tattoos. Like, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and but the, I, someone showed me uh, Mark Small showed me his podcast, and I, and I was like, wait, hold on. So they do an interview with a porn star, oh, Mark. and then they uh, he is fucking hilarious. He's great, great dude. He is yeah, so yeah, funny. We, you know who uh, was with me in Boston was Mark Smalls and Chris Porter. Chris, Chris hilarious. Porter, yeah, murdered at the yeah. Garden. I was backstage and like trying to like hiding to try to come up on the stage, and I'm listening to him destroy with the with this rape joke that the fucking <laughs> place is going. Boom, and I'm like, holy shit! I don't know if I can follow him, but yeah, this is a great fucking workaround. Yeah, his actual podcast, and No Jumper, like, there's always he some, interviewed like just threw water in his face the other day. For real, really? Yeah, like somebody Why? wanted the show, a dude or a chick, a dude. Oh yeah, something like threw water in his face. Well, what dude, what did he do? Just took it like a bitch, got his dick sucked by two hot chicks. Yeah, <laughs> he goes, you know what? I'm not gonna mix it up right now, hun. Get one of your slept bag friends over here. I'm gonna dick her down while you fucking guide yeah, my goes, wiener into her butthole. Did oh, you just throw a bottle of pussy juice in my face? Sorry, that's the only liquid. Yeah. I oh, thank you for that. Uh, I was really hot from getting yeah. fucked by two hot chicks. Uh, what, was, what was he before? Honey, spitting one of your friend's assholes. I'm coming home hot. <laughs> I saw her eat a girl's asshole, and I was like, oh. I was like, oh, they really go after it. Yeah, warning this story. Yeah, 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 she'll suck an asshole for sure. He gets held up at gunpoint. Oh, what? Election. No. Whoa, whoa, what whoa, the whoa, fuck? whoa, whoa! Oh my god, that's not what you do with a gun. He's smiling though. Why is he laughing? This, the is, gun. Real. this no. is real. No, no. Hang on, hang on. Did you really get real. held up? Also, if you're gonna fight a little, fight a lot. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that should be a T-shirt, dude. I agree with that's you. If you made the, if you made the decision that you're gonna fight the guy with the gun, that's like, a go great for it. Stop being so. He's like, hey, he's like, a little, he's like, fight a lot. Oh, <laughs> stop it, silly pants. Get that gun out of my face. <laughs> it's crazy. Little, Come on, you're being a lot. goofball. What are you doing? <laughs> that is more poetic for life. If you're yeah. gonna fight a little. Fight a, lot. fight a lot. You're gonna fight a little. Fight a lot. That's a fucking brilliant statement. That's crazy. What I was just watched. Jeez. 
Yeah, that's I, not, I know. You're just like sort of fighting don't, back. Definitely don't play with the gun. Like yeah. just either let him point it at you yeah, or dude, freeze. You think with it, hey, if you're hey, gonna yeah. fight, well, what he was doing, you might as well try to put his finger in the barrel <laughs> like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a gun pulled on you by a cop? Oh, I, 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 yeah, it's by cops. I've had a couple times. Yeah. I've had it a couple times. By, by cops. By, no, by, by a dude. Yeah. Yeah. I got robbed. Yeah. By dude. Times, that was a great old Dave, a great old Dave bit where he, he got robbed by these young black kids in his neighborhood and then he ran upstairs uh, to go grab a knife. It's not a bit. It's a story. Yeah, I used sure, to tell it, it on but stage. Wait, what happened? What happened? Were, I've been well, threatened was, with gun only, but I never I got, held one on. Well, I got jumped. It was I was living in Brooklyn at the time. Well, and, I knew uh, you. We were friends already. Oh yeah, yeah. We were all friends. I was doing stand up and shit. I think I was. I might have come from Jay's earlier that day or whatever. I don't even remember. But I was coming the, home. Oh, the, the one that I'm aware of very much. Is yeah, that, I mean, I'm, was... maybe I was at your house the next. I was. Yeah, we were all friends. No, I already. dropped you off that night, and you went to now, the store. Was it that? You were whatever. From the was store. it that? I don't even remember that part. But yes, yeah, so I was walking back. You know, it was like late night after the clubs, so like three in the morning or something like that. And I was walking up my block, and there was like a like a you know like a group of kids on. Um, on my block and i if i remember i first veered off because like they looked suspicious to me oh, yeah. and i was like fuck like that doesn't look good but then you, walked, you started to work yourself up like rocky like what am i doing am i a bitch no literally that's it is yeah, I, I, I walked around and i was like i'm uh, fuck it and i remember looking and there was a kid i thought was following me like this kind of thug looking dude following me as i was walking and i remember and so i circled my block and then i came to the bottom of of it and the kid, I stopped and smoked a cigarette and just stared back at the kid. And the kid just passed me. And I was like, all right, this is, I'm, first off, I'm being a pussy. Like, I'm scared to walk home. And yeah. this is, I was thinking this kid's following me and this is ridiculous. Like, I was like, fuck it, I'm going home. And so I walked back up the block and I remember walking up the block and they were gone. And then they came back. I saw them like at the top of the block. And then I looked like back Velociraptors and I saw, angles. I saw the kid who had passed <laughs> Just me. Just stay still. <laughs> no, so this kid had passed me. Or should I act dead? And come back. Do I act big or dead? Is it a bear? What do you do? James, you speak sign language to him? Big or dead? I don't know. One or the other. Either way, well, if I pick the wrong one, I'm dead. Yeah. Well, I didn't do either. But I, I looked back and I saw the kid who had passed me. I'd circled back and he was following me back up the block. So at that point, like I knew I was like, oh, this is 100 percent. I'm yeah. getting jumped here. Yeah. And so I just like I started walking up toward my uh, my house. I got right to the front of my apartment building and they all like uh, converged. Con converged and jumped in front of me. And a kid, he pulled out a gun and uh, and then they like started coming up on me. And one of them grabbed me by the neck and I, oh, I like dude, I, I, I slapped his hand down. I, I slapped his hand down, which was just a completely instinctual thing. Like, yeah. uh, and then I slapped his hand down, and then the kid like cocked the gun and put it up to my head. And I was like, that, that was like, I was like, got me, you got me. I was like, all right, I'm done. Head? Yeah, I think, yeah, oh. he did. And, and that was, at that point, I was like, I got, you got me, got me. And then I remember I, just, I put my hands up, and he had the gun to my head, and I felt what felt like, 75 15 year old black hands in my pockets just they just took so dave started like coming. Said, oh, long fingers <laughs> wait wait how did an extra an extra knuckle in each finger wait how did you how did they did they take anything good they no I mean, had was, nothing good he was fucking 20 yeah, I, I was broke at the time yeah, but they took everything they took shit. my my passport. fucking my i had my passport on me which was Why the would biggest bitch because i had lost my uh license we were and so i was kids. using it to like get into bars and shit so I'd lost, I'd lost my, my license. So I, all I had on me was a passport is like an ID. Yeah. So I fucking had that on me. That sucked. So they got that. They took my cell phone. They fucking took it. They did. I remember uh, once they all ran off looking and my keys were on the floor, like a few feet ahead. So they had taken my keys out of my pocket, but at least they had the decency to drop those. Yeah. So I could decent. get into my, uh, apartment. Was decent. but yeah, I told, no, actually not nothing, dude. Something. Pretty, pretty decent. Good kids. Yeah. These kids had a tough they life. Good you. kids. They didn't hit you, right? They didn't. They didn't hit me. I didn't, didn't hit you. Didn't kill you. They didn't. Kill I said you. I almost. Uh, I. I. In thinking about it, I go. Um. It's. Om it was almost better they had the gun. Cause like if I had tried, these kids would have just fucked me up. If yeah. I had tried. To, I guarantee like, they them. ended up at a jungle gym down the street and guys, Ooh, guys easy. like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I was Dude, thinking like the outsiders where, where Pony Boy the man with the yellow hat comes to round them up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Bert, this show's gotten edgy in the new studio. <laughs> and the guy, I goes, like new studio, Bert. The guy goes, the guy goes, his passport was going to expire in three months anyway. We're doing him a job. So. <laughs> he would have never gotten around to renewing it. <laughs> doesn't even look like him anymore. Yeah, he's a new picture. But the bit is really funny. So Dave, he he's upset. He runs upstairs and he gets a knife. I was so, the thing is like, it's like in the moment, you're kind of like, it's not, people think it's like, it's not scary. 
in a weird way. Like in a weird way, when someone pulls a gun to your head, it's almost like it's very calming and you're very like, you're like, okay, look, I want to get from point A to point B. It's yeah. like the only, it's like perfect clarity in your life. Point A is this guy has a gun to my head. Point B is he does not. And I want to do whatever I can to get well, to that point. It's also not that scary where you're saying like fearful in the moment because when you re when you're immediate reaction, which just should be immediate submission, you're like, I'm going to do like, this guy doesn't want to just kill me. Clearly. It's like, he wants it. I, so I'll I, give I, him I whatever. Wanna, like, 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 not even like, thinking talk about to him, it. Like, dude, come on. You don't want to do this. Yeah. Well, it's, You're I was kill even, me yeah. over a passport. It, 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 I'm, I'm not worth it, man. I'm not worth it. Keys. I mean, I, I really, I did not have much. I do remember at one point he goes, <laughs> I was so oh, broke my at subway the time. card had nine punches on it. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, I was so broke at the time too. This is like 15 years ago or something like that. But it's like, uh, uh, he goes, <laughs> says, he had the, the guy with the gun yelled at me at one point. He goes, uh, he goes, what's the pin number? Uh, and I was like, what? And he goes, the pin number to your credit cards. And I go, I don't have any credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's that's really fucking good. sad, bro. That's pathetic, man. You should probably get your life together. Start with really a discover did. card and build slowly. I was, like, I was like, there's a chase card to an overdrawn account. Like you have, you're taking negative two hundred dollars. You just the wrong me. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're actually accruing my debt now. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay those off, buddy. <laughs> Fannie Mae will be in touch. <laughs> uh, so I, I was nothing, but you know, it was like maybe twenty bucks or something in my wallet. How funny is that? They're short sided racism of just seeing a white guy yeah. going, they'll have tons of money. He goes, you need to wait a while. It was a nice neighborhood. So Dave lived in a nice neighborhood. It was, it was, slope. it was, it was in Prospect Heights. Slope. It was kind of, it was kind of, no, it was, it was not, it was the Prospect Heights. It was Heights. the place that we lived in? Yeah, but that, well, no, this was a different place than that. Okay. This was uh my, oh, the place that you moved into for a very little bit. Yes, yeah. that was, that was Sterling. that place. Sterling place. That yes. place almost ended mine and Dave's friendship. Yeah, that's why? a whole different story. Why? But I will, because, well, let me just finish I, this one because right, the funny part, why, sure. Yeah. But the funny part of, uh, so I, so it's like, you don't feel anything when the gun's at your head, but then as soon as they ran off and they also ran like, you know, which is almost like fills you with, so then all well, of a sudden it black. all That's hits what they you. do, Dave. Well, they ran and so fast. It was like, yes. that was a record breaking time. You can't time. make those guys work. Uh, so, and then I was just filled with, with rage. I just realized, I just want to be very clear because I know this is playing throughout the house. I have an employee who's a black dude who I have not yet met. He's probably running right now. No, he's no, right, right now he's right now he's getting to know my podcast very intimately. He's like, so this is what we do. Well, yeah, listen, it's yeah. nothing against any employee of no, yours, but no, like, was no. he in oh, Brooklyn thanks, in 2009? Because if so... <laughs> Yeah, 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 please. Thank you. I'm saying, uh, do you have a security system here? I didn't realize you had a black up. employee. No, uh, uh, I, the one, few times I've had gun put uh, pulled on me, when I was in high school and uh, we were doing a scavenger hunt, and the dude pulled up in a CRX and put a gun and put it into our window. And uh, and because we had stolen his, uh, bur uh, he had uh, lawn jockeys. I mean, it was one of the things you could steal. They were all over fucking Florida. And so we stole him, and then he, or a birdbath maybe, and he, pull, he, pull, <laughs> he stole his birdbath. And whatever we stole, he, we tried to steal. We didn't get it, but he chased us down, and he had a, yeah, what had if he a had shot for a birdbath. And by the way, it was the most fascinating chase gun moment you could ever have in life because we were in a, um, we were in a station wagon, and he was in a CRX. I wish I could tell you the exact streets, but it's, I think it's Bay to Bay. And we got on uh, Bay Shore. But what would happen was he was behind us and we were to light and he would try to get out of the car to come up to get to our car and we would just take <laughs> off. There was like middle of the night. So, there's no one, so we start there. So he'd get back in his car. And so we were playing this game of chicken and all of a sudden we go, we go to get on Bay Shore. Bay Shore is the longest continuous street, I think, in, in sidewalk in the, in the world. It's, it's, on the water in Florida, in Tampa. And we're going to take a left on Bayshore and he's behind us and he's like trying to zoom, zoom, zoom. And so all of a sudden he gets right here and then he, he goes for it. He pops out of his car and he goes to run and we're like, punch it. And this dude Fritz punches it and I swear to God, his car, his car goes, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and it, I swear to God, I swear to God. He goes, rrrin, rrrin, rrrin. and it turns it over, he starts running and the guy gets on the side of the car, he's on the side of the car and he's in the back seat window where I am and he's like, and we're opening the door, opening the door and we knock him off the car going down to base or and he falls off and we run over his leg and then we just kept going we're like, we pulled into a parking lot at a hotel and 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 we sat there shaking. We were in high school. We're like, and for the next week, I just anytime I saw a CRX, I was like, motherfucker. But that was the 
I wish I could articulate it better, but it was like the most thrilling chase you've ever seen. I had guns put on me all the time in Florida when I was a kid. Really? Just, all yeah, the time? Would, uh, Just uh, all the time. It still happens. So still I grew up in happens. New York, in the suburbs of New York. We didn't, people didn't have guns. Oh, that, that regularly. So it, oh. it was it, it's it, for a long time. It's been difficult to get a gun in New York. So luckily I didn't have that. I remember there was a bully. This kid, Nick Giacoli. I'll say his name on Burkest. Oh, shit. He's out there. He's probably listening. That's a ticket sale I Congrats, lost. Nick. <laughs> we got a shirt for you. If you're going to fight a little, fight a lot. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I remember he uh he had a bow and arrow, dude. And he fucking dude, he one time he was just like Did you grow up in a tough neighborhood in the 1400s? <laughs> <laughs> no, he he was just like in Rockland County, New York, it was just white trash where I was at specifically, like yeah. North Rockland area, white trash. It was a lot of like fucking just like people that would fucking, you know. Um, and this kind of a bow and arrow, dude, and he pointed at me one time and the uncomfortable Feeling like you know, have you ever had somebody take a rubber band and yeah, point at your face, dude? And you're just like, dude, you're like, fucking no, just, no, 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 no. Have you ever had someone go past me on the road and they go like this and yeah. they keep going like this? And you're like, hey, man, you either got to throw it or not throw it. And no matter when they throw it, you never catch it. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, uh, it was the most like, because all it took was him to slip for a second. He was going to murder me with a bow and arrow. Which seems, if it murders you, it's way worse than being shot. It's so slow. A bow and arrow that you, kills it's you a, is It's like... a 16-hour death. You're lying oh, there. Oh, you got to do that gone. thing where you break the end of the arrow <laughs> off. You don't even know why, but you're supposed to do that. We, uh, I was saying to someone how fucked up I grew up. I, 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 I'm, I was going to try to do this as a bit, but it just comes off very weird. And I was saying to someone like how rough it was, and I, but it isn't until your neighborhood, my neighborhood was, it was just redneck-ish. And mm. so like their first day there, the big kids came up to the, I was in the little kids, I was like 10, came up to us and they're like, hey, we're going to hunt you. And we're like, huh? And they're like, we'll get to the count of 10 and then we're going to hunt you guys. So you guys are a dangerous game. Yeah. And they had BB guns. And then we're like, we're like, what? I don't think we want to be hunted. And they're like, 10. No, it wasn't and so we hid, but it wasn't like because all you can do is run. You can't you, yeah. really, you can't disagree with like 10, 9, and then if yeah. you run, <laughs> you technically agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was fat enough that I would be like, all right, you got 10 seconds to think of a reason. You gotta lawyer this up right here and be like, you know, hey guys, you don't want to get involved in this. <laughs> uh, Hunting people. Is that, where does it go? You're already you're peeking out. No, they were, I lived in a very highly like racist white trash neighborhood. So they would they would play manhunt and it would just be me because I was the brown kid. And they would hunt me and it's hilarious when you think about it. <laughs> they they called you a man. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, a man. Like hunt. pig hunt. They would yeah, they would hunt me and uh that was it. It was like tag with everyone against me. Yeah, my scariest gun pull that I, is the Kareem story. Kareem Green. I thought you were say when I put a gun into your asshole. No, no that wasn't that scary. I was going to say that every was, that was exhilarating. Every gun story is a Kareem story. If you want to get technical, <laughs> technically speaking, Wait, who's Kareem? Kareem, Kareem Green. Who's funny comic. comic. It's very very, very funny, funny comic. comic. Yeah. But we years ago did a gig in uh, Maryland, and we were we met a girl at a bar who said like she wanted to fuck us both, and we were like at an age where like sure that sounds great. And what she actually did over the course of like a long story is was setting us up to get robbed by two guys in the street. And like Kareem got out of the car, uh, where I, which I told him not to. And then they grabbed him and one guy pulled, I don't know if it was a gun was loaded, never went off or anything, but like the guy was waving a gun around and, uh, the Kareem like fought a guy with a gun. Like if you're going to fight a little fight a lot, yeah. but he, his mistake was he knocked the guy on the ground with the gun. The guy still had the gun though. And Kareem goes, Come on. That's what I always thought was that's the exact split between our personalities right there. He was like, come on. I go, you've won, man. <laughs> you've already won. You're not dead, and that guy's got a gun. Guns are sc- the, uh, I, I, Me and Lewis went shooting in uh, Texas. We went to a, a shooting range, and I've never done that before. That kind of, And we shot AR-15s and some, like, 9 millimeters or 45s, and I thoroughly did not enjoy it yeah after 15 minutes i was like where'd jay go he's uh, literally right. gone it's, and i walk outside he's sitting on the curb smoking a cigarette shaking it's terrifying. I, I feel it was it was i don't know how to describe it other than it was it's violent unnerving. it was very but violent i understand they're why. Loud, way louder than you think they're gonna be yeah. it's loud it makes it, it makes it go like anytime you see a movie where anyone shoots anyone you're like the whole fucking neighborhood knows about this and it also oh. it's very crude like when you see like the mechanism for like you know the, the actual like the clip with the bullets in it it's it's just it doesn't it, feel like it fits right like whatever it, it is yeah, it, it feels, feels like I, I thought of the technology 
analogy for guns before I shot a gun was going to be a little more like intricate, but it's like a hammer smacks into a fucking the back of yep. a bullet that has gunpowder in it and it yeah. fucking fires that thing out and it's a slug and it shoots out of the front Spring. of it. Yeah, it's all like whatever it is, it's it's kind of crude and it feels like not. It doesn't feel safe. Yeah. It, does, does it feels feel like safe. this technology was invented and it was like 50 years ago. And like, I feel like just, it's, it's pure death. It's all I feel like for. it's going to explode yeah. in my hand and my face is going to blow oh, 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 up. I I, 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 definitely. The first time I ever shot guns was in East LA. Was it between us and Joe Rogan, by the way, the conversation oh. we're having right now, the gay ass conversation. Oh, we were all scared. The ninnies, he thinks. <laughs> the, uh, I went shotguns in East LA and I, I had like a fucking, I don't know. Cause I, as a comic, I just put on like a, Allen Iverson jersey and some Fruity. khakis. I was like, I was like, I'm gonna roll in like Snoop Dogg, right? And I go in, I don't realize that the dudes shooting guns at this place are all fucking gangbangers. They're all fucking gangbangers. Practicing yeah, range. like literally shooting guns. And I walked in and I was like, I was and I was like, the the fragility of life was like just highlighted to me. And I didn't put the headsets on. I walked in without the headsets, not knowing how loud it was gonna be. Oh, I, and all of a sudden you're just like, like it's loud and I'm dropping bullets everywhere. I have that little thing and I'm like, ah, ah, and I had a panic attack. I started crying and I, I had to leave. And and I was like, I can't be in here. It yeah, I, 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 bore, I didn't have a panic attack, but I was genuinely, like, if there, I was getting like tense where I was like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I've gone the other, the other guys, uh, the other guy's shells were like coming over like, they <laughs> they like yeah. well, no, it would be like hot. It was like hot on your forehead. So, hey. <laughs> We shot, and also, we, I just thought, all I kept thinking about too was I go, I don't know, except for Lewis, I didn't know the other four people in there shooting. And, and, like, and that's just the fucking goes, crazy they thing. They can just make a decision. Because you go, they go, oh, why wouldn't they do, why wouldn't they just turn their gun and shoot you? And they go, because there's a bunch of other people in here with guns. I go, if they're shooting, they clearly don't give a fuck. They don't think they're leaving. Yeah, they just kind of have one bullet that goes really fast. <laughs> yeah. What happened to, what's happened to fucking uh, Kyle? The, the American sniper. American yeah, sniper. Yeah. They take a guy with PTSD out to shoot, and then he just kills them all. Yeah, yeah. isn't that what happened? It's so funny because yeah. I've shot maybe five, six times. Oh, right? I I, we we went to off. Vegas, had a great time. Like a, a, a comic um, brought us out to like the desert. We just shot up fucking cans, and it was really fun. Yeah, Robbie Bernstein uh, set that up. That uh, sounds and fun. That was awesome. It was fucking. We'll uh, do it next time we go to Vegas. That's not where I'll I want to do it. That's not where I want to do it. It was really cool. No, we, I've done. I like. But I want to be in a thing, gun like, range. I I was like, what that is. I've shot. I've shot a half dozen times at least. Right. To this day, like if you had guns here, right? And like, oh shit, there's people outside. They're trying to break in and fucking kill us. I don't know that I would have the wherewithal to figure out how to load it, oh. set it, like fucking, and go and defend myself. No, that's why, that's why. That's why I went to Terran Tactical. I mean, have you been to Terran Tactical? I haven't been, but so I, I see all, all my comic friends go to Terran Tactical and look like fucking gangsters. John Wick. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Dude, yeah. And because yeah, I said, bang, to him, I said, I go, I have, I want to bring my gun, so I know that I can use my gun. And then he looked at my gun. He goes, he goes, I'm going to give you a better gun. It's the same gun you have, though. It's just it's just better shaped. And I was like, OK, and it was much better. And I was like, oh, I want that one. He's like, it's not fucking two, twenty three hundred dollars. And I was like, whoa, he like customizes guns. And Taryn's a fucking badass. But uh, the crazy thing is holst uh, having a gun holstered out, pop, 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 top it out, put another one in, pop, 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 pop. It's really fucking crazy because once you get into rote, you go, that's the thing. The question is. Are you the person that could kill someone? My wife? Yes. You can kill your wife. Le no, I would. She cheated. <laughs> if she cheated on me, yeah, I would. I'd He's kill her and my daughters. The uh I gotta be a single father. But first the daughters He's, in front yeah. of her. Well, and the cat and the cat and the fucking dogs. <laughs> the, I'm killing everybody. I'm cleaning the house. So no, but she might Leanne could kill someone. Leanne would have no problem killing someone. I think if I felt that threatened, I could, but uh I don't know, but I will say it's funny because how afraid I was and just like unsettling with the guns. If I owned a house, for sure, I I want to own a gun. Oh, I have. Well, I have, like to have. I, I, have I was going to ask you as a homo, as, how are you wonder are you wanting to get a gun? No comment. <laughs> but yeah, I think I could very easily kill someone if I felt like my family was threatened. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, but just like wait, so wait, not, wait, hold not in that I'm situation. Tell you, I'm tell, I'm tell you. To do it easily, so, but to hang on. To get, so we had. We were redoing our old house, right? The old, you remember the house when we, you were there? Yeah. When we were redoing it. And so. You killed a guy? No, a homeless guy tried to break in to our front. We had the so front. you killed him? No. 
So I have I have my dog. You raped my, him. My, I, <laughs> the dog killed no. him. I, my dog raped him. And then you raped the dog. <laughs> and then I raped the dog. Classic Bert. <laughs> and then I killed them both. <laughs> Classic Kreischer. <laughs> Secret time. So Secret time I raped I had, dog. I had a gun. <laughs> was, I had a gun. Secret time got dark. <laughs> Secret <laughs> time I raped and killed my dog. Cut this, cut this, cut this. But, uh, also edited out my yeah. dog's name. Remember Puddles? <laughs> I, I had a gun that shot uh, pepper spray. So I had, I was during that time, I was buying a lot of fucking self-defense stuff, but I had a gun that shot pepper spray. And so I had this gun <laughs> and my dog and the guy's trying to break in. They're trying to climb over the fence and the fence, I think was, it was, he was just out of his mind. And I, and I, my daughters were there, the dogs going crazy. And I'm like, Hey buddy, you need to turn it around. And he was like, just uh, talking crazy. And I pulled the, it looks like a gun. I pulled it out and he said to me, please and i went Ooh. okay and i was like first of all this is pepper spray second of all i am don't want to put pepper spray on him because once i put pepper <laughs> spray it escalates to the next thing which i already know i'm not willing to go where he's well, willing by the way, to go. if you're pepper spraying him you're pepper spraying yourself and sort of everyone in the vicinity, yeah, everyone in the yeah. vicinity. <laughs> really? and so and so but when he said please i was like okay not only do I not have the balls to pepper spray someone, mm -hmm. I definitely don't have the balls to kill someone. Yeah. And then Leanne was like, Leanne's like, give me the gun, faggot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leanne, Leanne would have no. First she sprays in her own mouth, the shells. <laughs> 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 she, when I bought my gun, the guy goes, how many bullets do you want? And I was like, uh, I don't know. One I for go, her, one for me. <laughs> I go, I go, I go. <laughs> I goes, a little murder suey, a little murder suey. <laughs> he goes, I bought a shotgun and I bought a, a Glock. And he goes, so what you, what you wanted with the shotgun is you want bucks, you want bird shot and then buck shot. It's two different one. He described him. One of them, uh, one of them scares him. And the other one, you got to replace walls. And so yeah, I said, bird shot is like, you'll fucking shoot him. And then he's like, fuck. He's yeah. got a bunch of little BBs all over. His so when you do shotgun, face. you have two things of bird shot and then you have buck shot behind that. So, so you loaded up with two of those. So you're like, bam, scare you, bam, scare you. Now you're dying. And so, and so then he, I got my Glock and he goes, what, how many bullets do you want for your, what do you want for your Glock? And I said, I don't know. What do you want? And he goes, well, and Leanne's always been like this hollow points. You fucking you, <laughs> cop you, killers. You, you, you no, it's hollow points, right? It's yeah. hollow points. She goes, hollow points. You always, you don't kill someone. You don't shoot someone to hurt them. You shoot them to kill them. Mm. Like that's why you shoot. And what if someone. they're wearing a vest? I like she knows all this. <laughs> and she goes. So I go. Yeah, I'll take hollow points. And he goes, How many? I said, Ah, oh, give me like ten cases. <laughs> he goes, How many people do you plan on killing? <laughs> I, said, I don't know. And he goes, Just giving you a heads up. You probably will never use one hollow point, <laughs> let alone ten cases of hollow points. I go, one case that one probably case gets is you dead. on a government list. <laughs> you uh, Mr. Kreischer, can I ask you a is question? It, Are you going to war? Yeah. Is this specifically to tear through uh, Kevlar, right? I, I mean, my, so. my, I would if I was going to shoot somebody, I would want them to die. <clears throat> It'd have to be like a, a kill shot immediately through the skull. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. want to shoot oh. him Don't like, twitch, man. Shoot him, and then they're like begging, like, yeah. please, yeah. why, dude? Why, dude? Don't leave me, man. Yeah, don't I be can't like, walk. I was why just trying to feed would... my family. <laughs> why would you murder me? Why would you murder me? I was just trying to steal. I was just trying to kill oh. you. Tell my wheelchair daughter I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Oh, dude, uh, that's why Take I never, this watch, give it to my son. It's, it's why I would never go hunting because I feel like I would shoot a deer and I would shoot it and I'd have to watch it oh. die slowly. Oh, yeah, you go over oh. to it, it goes, it's dead, and then it starts going like, ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh. you fucking shoot a deer's leg off? And it's Joe Rogan just... would hate me for that reason. If he was like, let's go hunting, like, I don't want to touch a dead animal. So he's like, grab it by the hoof. So I'd be like, uh, like I'm such a I'm no such dead a girl animal. About my it. word, I do not want to deal with a dying animal. Like I, dude, I, yeah. I tell you, one time my mom, like we had these uh, glue traps, right? And fucking my oh. mom the, for mice, they oh, watched, he watched their God. family dog die on it's, those traps. This is so sad. Those are so sad. Just dude. watching, I hate mice, I hate rats, but just watching them suffer where they're stuck to it, and like yeah, well, that's what happened. Brutal. So it was on the glue trap. My mom. My mom was, even though she was a fucking junkie hooker, she actually had some humanity in her because she felt so bad that this mouse was in the glue trap. So she, I remember she took her kitchen gloves and she's trying to tear the mouse 
all the loops oh, wrapped, and it's like skin is being pulled off its face, <laughs> and it's like just twitching. It's like foot was left on the glue trap, and at one point she like got it off, but it was like covered in glue, and it's like just twitching, oh. and she threw it in the dirt. So she was like, maybe if I get it in the dirt, it'll like get covered enough dirt that like the glue gets some grip, sticky. <laughs> Dude, so, smart. We, so she's rolling it around in the dirt. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It. So it's last. I mean, it's last <laughs> minute. <laughs> we we had we had off. a problem with my, uh, rats in our old house, and so rats like yeah, like legit rats. They were in the attic, and so Leanne got a guy to come out and he put traps everywhere. But more importantly, he closed off the attic so they couldn't come and go. And I remember Isla and I saw a rat run down the like the phone line and try to get in the attic and it was talking to its family like oh, it, no. and it was on the outside going like and then you could hear <laughs> and i was like dad just let him in the house and i was like no they're gonna die and then they all fucking it's just heartbreaking <laughs> jimmy just got accepted to med school <laughs> help they have a little rat pause on the thing i love you <laughs> you laugh so hard. <laughs> no, I mean, man, vermin like that, uh, you can kill it and make their families uh, watch with their eyes open. Uh, uh, any mouse or uh, rats, I can't feel bad. I, it's one I of the best episodes it. of Rick and Morty is the fucking uh, Pickle Rick, or, where he goes he just down to the, the sewers, then he just starts killing rats. Because it's just the one animal. Rats and cockroaches, you could murder. Yeah. I mean, and in front of me, for mice I have, either. Ooh, I don't understand people who collect cockroaches. That's disgusting. yeah, that's weird. There's a girl I saw on a video who collected cockroaches. Did you know it's not? It's a cockroach, not a cockroach. Yeah, I grew up in Florida. I thought it was a cockroach, like a shit roach. Yeah. Well, until like we also think it's a tutu. It yeah. is a tutu. In 2006, I thought it was a papa roach. <laughs> <laughs> they just did a show at, oh, yeah. at Shakey's Pizza, Halston went. Shaky's Pizza? Uh, Papa Roach's brother? Little brother? They should have done it at Papa John's. That would have made sense. Uncle Roach? Oh, what the fuck? No, uh, uh, Nephew Roach. He His brother is a really great content creator. He's really good, good on like TikTok. He makes does it for bands. He like Jackson does all their Holmes. stuff. I met with him. I think Halston knows him. I met with him. He was really fucking talented. Um, yeah. Pa, uh, what were we, oh, I remember as a kid laying in my sister's bed. We all do. And a roach was claw crawling on the ceiling. Oh. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And it landed on my chest and oh. fell. And I fucking had a hard time sleeping for about a year after that. For a fucking yeah. year. My dad would come in town. We'd go stay at my uncle's house in South Philly. And it was a house like you'd sleep on the couch. No AC. It was hot in the summertime. And when the lights went out, You'd see roaches coming everywhere, and then oh. it was like when the lights came on, oh, you'd that's see the them scatter. Yeah. And I mean, like dozens of them. Like it was just yeah, you're welcome like, to welcome to being a Puerto Rican, Jay. That's how I grew up. Well, that's my that's whole, just entire was, existence. They that's turn why the lights on. Like, they love so much. They wrote. That's why they all sing La Cucaracha. <laughs> Did I Wait, fucking that, what it, hang on? What is that? Uh, Jesus Trejo just explained it to me that song. The lyrics are. What are the, the lyrics? The cockroach. The cockroach. And we pull up the lyrics. It's a, it's a weird song. He, he we were in uh, La Cucaracha, La Cucaracha, Good La Cucu. It's a white person La typing this in. in your mother's ass. What are the lyrics? La Cucaracha. Go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia, right there, right there. La Cucaracha. But a cockroach you cannot walk. Oh, he's got broken legs or something. It's a it's a sad. I, I, Jesus was singing it to me dude, when we were. Damn, dude, Mexican culture sucks that much that they wrote a song about a cockroach. Also, they don't know what melody fits a sad song. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. La da 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 da. My legs are broke. My legs are broke. <laughs> I cannot fucking walk. La cucaracha. My buddy, my buddy was Cuban, uh, and when we came out here, he got missed. I was. I never understood inter, inter. Uh, racism within the same like mm -hmm. ethnicity technically and uh our, his mom had bought him a red uh fleece for christmas and he was wearing it and it's also what happens to be what every uh valet guy wears is a red fleece and someone we were at jerry's deli on mel on beverly melrose and someone threw him his keys and he <laughs> looked at him he goes you think i'm a fucking mexican 
And I was like, yo, Eddie, dude, no chill. Offense, you kind of do the like, Shut the fuck up. And he's like, I'm not a fucking Mexican. He threw his keys on the ground. And then the, there's a dude in the exact same vest, in the exact same fucking fleece he's in. And he just grabs the keys. And I was like, he's right there, Eddie. He goes, like, Jesus Christ. It's okay. I'm a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> What's the. What's the actual lyrics? Yeah, what are the lyrics? It's from they got to be on this Revolution. page somewhere. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Por, por que no tiene, por que no falta. And it was uh, the cockroach, the cockroach can no longer walk because she doesn't have, because she lacks the two hind legs to walk. <laughs> <laughs> the light was just my, I couldn't see the last one. <laughs> two hind legs to walk. Hind legs the two hind legs to walk. <laughs> they could do that about a lot of animals. <laughs> Wow, that is a really shitty song. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. And this blew up as like their most famous song. Uh, People eat cockroaches. I think, I think La Bamba. Yeah, La Bamba and was pretty Selena, huge. Something Selena. Oh, La dude. Bamba. Is that, is I that... went, you do not fuck around about Selena in San Antonio. Yeah, they're that is, it, They have a Selena statue. Dude, you better shit on the Alamo before you talk about Selena. Have you listened to any, I've listened to, I got, I'm into Selena. We all bought shirts. And I listened to her while I was jogging in San Antonio. She was fucking awesome. She was fucking legit. You're super into Tejano music. Yeah. Oh, so when they were redoing that, you've gone deep house, dive Tejano. Yeah. When they were doing our redoing our house, the dudes doing our house would listen to Norteños music, uh, Tejano music, and what's the other fucking one? And it would put me to sleep perfectly because I I wasn't listening. I was hearing. Like, because it was in Spanish, I wasn't listening to the lyrics. I was just hearing, relaxing. Is that what they meant in White Man Can't Jump? I think that's what he meant. We what? hear Jimmy, but he wasn't listening? Yeah. Wait, what's that? White Man Can't Jump. I remember that movie, but I don't know the phrase. There's a whole thing about how he can listen to Jimmy, but he can't he hear can't him. Because he's white. Because he's white. Wesley oh. Snipes tells that to Woody Harrelson. About Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. That's not the same. It's yeah. all, like I used to say, I used to have a joke. It's like brown noise, not white noise, but brown noise. Because I would listen to the, the, me the Mexican guys talking Spanish, <laughs> you go and, and it, would calm, it would calm me down. <laughs> it would calm me down. I could fall asleep. Hey, can you quiet down that brown noise? <laughs> no, it was Works like white noise, a, but a brown noise machine. <laughs> brown just noise turns machine. Just Mexican stuff. <laughs> He cannot walk because he has no What was the other legs? music they would listen to? And it would calm me the fuck down. And I would listen to them talk and they'd Los laugh. And I would, I would just be, I find myself smiling, listening to them li listen to music and bullshit. And, and I wasn't listening to them, but I was hearing them. Does that make sense? Sure. It was just, it was just noise because it was a different language. Sure. And so if yeah. it was English, you'd be listening. You'd be eavesdropping. Right, so, right. Yeah, and it would calm me the fuck down. I haven't found anything like that. I listen to a lot of podcasts now when I sleep. How old was Selena when she died? Uh, I thought she was way younger, right? Yeah, because she looks like she's kind of old. 23, I think. She was married. She was 23 because... Yeah, she was 23. She yeah. looks older. Uh, she's uh, She's got some bangers. No. Bailar. Bailar. No. I listen to a lot of I'm them. Enrique Iglesias. I don't know any her. I don't know any Selena. Yeah, you do. You know yeah, you the do. one. Yeah, you do. Yeah, Which you one? Do. The I could fall in love with you. And I know it's not right. Where's Selena? Top results. I'm a little drunk. That Selena. bourbon fucking really got to me. Selena. Hundred year aged. What's well, how come I don't have Selena, my Selena? Why do I only have Selena Gomez? This is Why crazy. do you have Selena Gomez? Is my I question. I was I, I I was a big supporter of Selena Gomez. I thought she would be the next big thing. She got fat. She was. Did, well, she, I think she no. lost her kidney. She lost her kidney. Yeah, she, her best friend gave her a kidney, and then her best friend turned on her. Or she turned on her best friend with her own kidney. By the way, I don't actually know if any of this is accurate at all. I'm being dead serious. I just know I saw a picture of Selena Gomez recently. I'm like, she got a little chunky. I don't want to be, no, 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 be no. a fat shamer. She, she always no, no, no. she was she was beautiful. She's not she chunky. was in Wizards of Waverly Place. Wizard Wizard of Waverly Place. My daughter and then she that. Yeah. yeah, so did George and Isla. And she dated Justin Bieber and I was like, this is the kid you invest in. This is the moneymaker. And I think she had a bad kidney and then her best friend gave her a kidney and then her and her best friend just had a falling out. The one that gave her kidney. Really? I, if your if your friend gives you a kidney and then you have a falling out, no matter what it is, it's your fault. 
She gave Did you Tracy a kidney. Morgan break up with his chick after she gave him a kidney. Wait, Tracy Morgan, true? and then well, no, and uh, and no, so. George Lopez did too. Really? Yeah, they both got kidneys. Thanks for the Wait, kidney. What do you need bitch. a kidney for? Like, when do you? How do you know? White you have a people bad thank people for their kidneys, and black people divorce them. But Mexicans do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your George Lopez or any Hispanic comic? Uh, hey, fill in the blank. Don't make it one person. <laughs> the, uh, and lupus. Ooh. Lupus and, uh, really you know, fuck you up? with kidney transplant, and, like a true friend. Lupus is cancer, is it? Uh-huh. Rice. I thought Rice lupus was like an autoimmune. Stepped up to volunteer for transplant. Yeah, but it is a version of cancer. She had the surgery and donated her kidney to Salome. And now what? And now, and now they had a they had a fucking. Why Selena's life saving BFF has the right to be upset? Appear to no longer be friends. Why? I think she saw her, she had a video of Selena just punching that kidney and not taking <laughs> she care goes, of oh, it. Oh, come on. I gave you that kidney. So I can feel that. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you give a kidney to? Would you give a kidney to Ari Shavir? If he was oh. going to die and I'm the only one? Yes. Wait. If I was, if it was, I was a blood match and that was the only, like, I'm the only friend of Ari's that can give him, I would and reluctantly like, give, because I know Ari wouldn't give me one of his kidneys. Ari would be like, I don't want yeah, that Puerto Rican kidney. You think Ari would, or Jay, you think Ari, if, I, if he was the only match, yeah. he's, you know what, I, I think he would. I do. I really do. I they had a falling out. They did have a falling out because she was punching her kidney. But let me say, that's what I said, they had a falling out, but, but that's exactly what it is. Like she said she made unhealthy choices getting after the train. So that's pretty funny to take ownership over somebody. Dave, I did give you a kidney, so why don't you knock off the vaping, huh? Well, like, you, have to make, you have to make choices in your life based off I can kind of understand though if you're like like if it, how unhealthy the choices are like if you're like doing drugs and you're killing yourself and you're like Yo, oh, yeah it's a little a vague it is vague what happens like, if on. I don't well, all right, I give my kidney how does that affect my life besides the scar and the oh, downtime goodness. from the surgery in what way does it affect my life negatively well no. Ari's gonna make fun of you a lot he's gonna be like ha ha I got your kidney you lose, your weight, kidney. lose weight lose some weight how much I'm doing gay weight? stuff with your kidney. Oh, you just the weight from the kidney. <laughs> the, I, I think, I, why don't we, like, the question is, why don't we all just, why doesn't a bunch of people just decide to just give all their kidneys? Because there are people that need kidneys that are on a transplant list right now. Because you're going to fucking get cut open. It's a whole to-do. Is it? Yeah, where are you it's not that you? bad, though. Where's a black getting, market? Getting put down, cut open, having your kidney taken out? It's a kind of you scary thing. It's going to be bad? funny since you, you got all of our hotel rooms uh, this week if we fucking harvested a kidney in one of our rooms from somebody a drifter yeah that's gonna show up on the incidentals i wish you could get i wish you could buy hair transplants from homeless people like i wish you could harvest hair from homeless people who need money and be like y'all give you like 15 grand just give me your hair and then i get their hair and they have to be bald but they can get out of their we're this is two steps away from becoming bum fights like, you know, we can just pay bums to beat each other up. And well, then no. loser has to give me their hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let's make this more interesting. You guys fight to the death. Loser gives me their hair. The what? winner gets 35 bucks. Would you, would, you, would you get transplants if you could? No, I looked good bald. But when I had hair, it was fucking goofy ass good. hair. It didn't look good. Soder got it. Yeah. Did you have, like, Wait, he got hair transplants? The, uh, yeah, yeah. Were they tra- yeah. Is he telling people? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was like, yeah, he said chill, dude. No, he said on the show, it looks great. It's it worked. It like took really. Yeah, that's now gay. I want to see his hair. It looks good. Um, I I've I've wanted to get him, but Liam won't let me. Let me see your hair. Yeah, it's going. I have I'm Why won't Liam? I'm I was gonna say, I don't think it's gonna go anymore. Yeah, yeah, but you don't. Look, you don't look bad. That's yeah. not. Yeah, I don't. I don't. That's an old bad. picture. I thought Segura got him. Because he was wearing hats a lot, he, he never wears hats. And I go, "You got transplants?" And he fucked with me. He was like, "No, no." He's like, "Don't tell anyone." <laughs> and then one day he showed up. I go, "You still bald?" And he goes, "Yeah, I think I'm fucking with you." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you son of a bitch!" Wait, so was Soder losing his hair? Yep. Justin did too, I think. Right? He got some shit. Propecia. No. Justin. Yeah, no, Justin Silver. Oh. Justin Silver. Oh, oh yeah, Justin yeah. Silver does uh like stuff, but like I think all topical shit. So Soder got like the shit from the back of his head plugged into the front of his head. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, he calls it space hair. That's fucking. I have a friend who I have a friend who did it, did it earlier, and he has to uh, get his hair done. He can't just like dude. Daniel Tosh did Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly. Really? I remember. I remember Tosh losing his hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at Machine Gun Kelly before after. I remember Tosh losing his hair. I think women 
I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. You know, Dan does well. He's a good looking dude. But I just feel like women would I mean, rather you just fucking go bald and be confident with who you are. Then yeah. you're then, not wrong about that. But some people just can't be like that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I mean, like I started going bald at like 18 or 19 if years old. If I was going to go bald, I think I'd probably go through all that. Machine Gun yeah. Kelly legit got hair transplant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. uh, good for him though. He looks so much better with hair. Oh, he yeah. kind of looks like Eliza. <laughs> 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 Machine Gun Schlesinger. He went from like he doesn't do rap anymore, does he? Nope, dude. I saw Eminem the most, the, 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 and I mean this: the most cringy clip I've ever seen in my entire life was him doing Drew Barrymore's nails on the Drew Barrymore talk show, oh. and her like, like just looking at him like he's like he's like sometimes I just don't feel like being in a good mood, you know? I gotta, and she's just like, oh. like in it, and like Wait, they're what? having the worst. It's one of the worst kind. Like, what right, 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 is this? I hate it. But she's an actress. She's I, I, literally I just, just acting I right now. I just want to bring and it people, the comments are like, like, oh my God, like the way she's just really actively like, listening to him. Not, yeah, I don't know. Whenever it is, she's, she just bugs me. She annoys me a you little can't, bit. You can't, I mean, I, I still think she's cute as hell. She's cute, yeah, sure. I'm sure she's a great person. Whatever it is, it just bugs me. Oh, See, no, her I, thing is like, it, it, that's what I'm saying. That's an old kind of nail. <laughs> Here's my fear, is that you get to a place in this career where you do those or you you do drew barrymore and you do the thing they whittle you down to the thing that like uh that is not the art anymore it's not the thing that why no, don't exactly. like you she's not she's was a, a legitimate actress in major major movies a great she was a child actress a great actress and then now exactly she's she's like every show she talks to people in the audience that are just like we're in a world where they should never be able to touch Drew Barrymore. Do you know what I mean? That was sort of, sort of the. Well, she's between, pretending. We, like we, actually, we try to say this about. It's not pretending, but like, she's almost like her thing is that she's in every woman. Yeah, she's yeah. not. You're like a bazillionaire. You're not it's one not of even these the money. People. Forget the money. It's just that she comes from. She's never, Hollywood, she's been a bazillionaire since she was a child. She didn't yeah. go to. She didn't go to school. Right. Yeah. Like she didn't go to school. So like, if you don't have that forming of going to school, just simply like not being cool and. Going and showering with other people, like the, those certain things that happen. That if you don't have, we never shower with other people. I think that was a regional thing. No, Northeast, we never had to shower in school with people, dude. Never. I never, that, I that never is, had school shower. I wouldn't. I would have cut. I would have dropped out of school in the ninth grade. Are yeah, you serious? Me too. I wait. I never had <laughs> school happening. showers. Are never. you fucking serious? It yep. is one of the most defining moments of my life. Oh, really? Yeah. No way. Without a fucking doubt, ninth grade, Coach Sio, uh just everyone gets done and, he, and it just got it got splashed on you he's like hit the showers did you hold your dick and like put back yeah. into a corner that's what I, I I'm, gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something if i had to take public showers when i was a teenager my mom would have walked in my room one day and just seen <laughs> my shoes and mc hammer pants swinging from a fucking fan <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. mc hammer pants just swinging i go uh-uh dude nope. she's so just looking go, oh, he's just doing can't touch this I it's fine. fucking remember it so vividly that i had to overcome it i had to overcome it and be confident naked because i was not confident naked are you just other ninth graders or is it like all high it's school everyone because that's, that's crazy, the worst dude. it's ninth everyone. grade really, crazy. ninth grade to twelfth grade is <laughs> rough yeah, 12 i mean we walked i remember walking by the showers and seeing men in there like 12th graders, <laughs> yeah. and then going like <gasps> Look, whoa that's that fucking hair. crazy i can't believe they shower here at school not knowing I was about to shower. Coach so I was like, everyone hit showers. I would have never, I swear to God, I would have never done it. In my high school, we did gym and we just got in our sweaty, we were sweaty, got in our clothes, went back to class. Yeah, I think my I think my senior year when I switched schools, I, I went to South Jersey from Philly. Philly was never, there's not even showers there. Uh, when in I the whole city, even in people's homes. Yes. <laughs> there were showers <laughs> in my high school, I, well, they, were, they were not used. When I, went to, I when, when I went to South Jersey. Yeah, when I went to South Jersey though, the school I graduated from, had showers, but I didn't even consider it a possible. Exactly, I would just change out of my shorts oh, no. and put my clothes back on. Bro, I am so comfortable naked around people. It is bizarre because of that liberty. Because you had, I had to get to a point where I was like, I was like, I remember there was a lot of iterations of these conversations, but like number one is 
No one's looking at your dick. Are you looking at dicks? And if you're looking at like, I am. And then people I'm, would totally look at dicks. Judging. By the way, I'm I'm counting the amount of dicks that are smaller. Than <laughs> oh my mine. god! It's just Lewis at lunch is just like, how about oh. new dick today? Huh? Dude, I would. They, there was a guy. There was a guy only that, at dicks. All there was a I remember guy from that looked Jim at Locker dicks. Rooms was dicks when I was younger. There was, was younger. one guy who looked at dicks. His name was Hog Watcher. And, <laughs> and and they'd be like, oh fucking Hog Watcher's getting in here. And so because he I, he would look at dicks. It was. What was his name? It was like Mike Hogwasher. <laughs> I, 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 by my senior year, I was so comfortable being naked that I literally, I've never had a problem since ninth grade. I had to overcome it and be like, yo, I got this dick. I can't change it. This is my dick. Uh, this is what I look like naked. Everyone is different. The dude, there are dudes with smaller dicks and bigger dicks, but I'm cool. And I, I mean, I can shit in front of people. I can. There's so much shit I can do, but it's all because of uh, All Boys Catholic Bro, you're school. a very comfortable person. I watched a clip of you on Are You Garbage the other day talking about how you, as an adult, eat your boogers. Yeah. It's the craziest thing I've ever oh, heard Leanne, in my entire life. Leanne will lose her shit. If Dude, she sees me eating a booger, she goes, "Don't, please don't do that. And I go, I'm just, sorry. I got to say, habit. she's making a pretty reasonable point. <laughs> yeah, dog, I, no, gotta, I don't care. It's you know, I like to take your side. It's one of the craziest she's, things that I, I, I watched that. Hey, man, I'm teaming. I, I, I can blow your my, mind. I can blow your mind. My mouth agape. No, I dude, I I went through a period during the pandemic where I was just wiping with my fingers. What? Stop it, Bert! Wiping your ass with, with your my fingers? fingers. Wait, during the pandemic? Why? Yeah. Why did you, you go were... insane? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Did you get cabin fever? <laughs> you can't but wipe. I, there was a toilet paper you shortage, but you fingers. had plenty of toilet paper. No, we were on. Is the that why you moved out of that Amityville house? <laughs> we, were, we were on the road, and uh, and I was, and I, I remember I had like hemorrhoid issues, and I just was like, I'm wiping so much, I'm on the road, and I'm getting dry toilet paper. I go. I was sitting in a, a, a KOA and I just turned the sink on next to me, put a handful of water in there and then washed my ass and went, yeah, wait, I'm cool with washing my you, ass. You gargled with your asshole? <laughs> yeah, I just fucking washed it and then I just went over more. And I'll tell you what, it's a much better wipe than you'll ever get. No, well, you're sort of it's manually. Not, no, it's much No, it's he's much not wrong. Better. I'll tell you why, Jay. You're all wrong. He's, no, he's not because it, what he's doing is he's essentially doing what a bidet wishes it could do. Oh there, if, well, a, oh, no, if a bidet God. had fingers, so like if a, a bidet had a bidet, fingers, another a bidet, t-shirt. If a bidet had fingers, <laughs> man, we're killing t-shirts today. <laughs> there was a bidet watching Bert brush his ass and going, well, we're out of business now. <laughs> his asshole's clean, but his fingers are covered in hep C. <laughs> no, no, you wash your hands afterwards. But like you- And then what, just live, I don't Bert, know. Bert, <laughs> nope. JJ, hold on. Do you, do you wash your ass in the shower? Oh yeah, I it's did. the same fucking thing. But it's no, shit. No, no, it's I wash not my, covered in no. shit. No, but I, you oh bullshit. Yeah, you know when you go to wipe, wash your ass. I, when I, I, if shit. I'm gonna shower right after I shit, I'll give myself two little mini wipes. Yeah, <laughs> there, same <laughs> thing. Just a couple little mini wipes. <laughs> I'm not going to go in fucking Lewis finger in the asshole you. shit. My, my, I, I, okay, I do. Yeah, I do you know that. what? I got to say, if I'm in the shower after taking a shit, yeah. I'm doing exactly yeah, what Bert did. It's the same thing. You, you don't wipe a little first? No, no, no. I wiped with toilet paper first. I'm not going a in raw. Wipes, but, but, yeah, but you're not going to go. I'm wipe, not going to go. I'm not wasting I am. all that toilet like paper. I do. fucking investigatory wipe. <laughs> no, no, I do. Yes. Just let's, let's do it to do I'm it. I'm telling you, I go, I go insane, clean on it, and then get in the shower and finger fuck my asshole with soap. Yeah, for another uh, bit. Yeah, you. Can, I was doing that in Europe. All this. I proved. I, well, Lewis has come and watched me. I've come while watching you. He's come while watching me, but he watched me uh, put a knuckle up my butt and re pull that paper. No, with, we were all so sure Jay was going to fail. Super confident. I'm like, there will be no shit. Well, here's the thing. It's not about the cleanliness of asshole, Jay, because I've thought about this a lot since that happened on Legion of Skanks. Please, every day. <clears throat> It was really about you relive it over and over again. If you have to shit, there's like a little fucking shit torpedo in the chamber at the end of your oh, esophagus, yeah. I uh, assume. Yeah, yeah. So if you go in there, you're sort of rubbing the tip of that shit. It's not oh, about yeah. your asshole being clean. You're tickling a shit turd. Not me. Not you. You're always just completely colon clear. Finger fuck my ass right now. Dude. Right now? You will see it. You will get nothing now, out. Can we get a glove? I would. I'd go in there. Go in with Jay right now and see if he's got a competitive have you ever, asshole have, right have now. You, I haven't gotten a colonoscopy yet. Have you gotten a colonoscopy? No, they told me I'm not old enough yet. Wait, how old are you? 40. You're only 40? Yeah. I are you like, serious? Shit, I'm falling apart. I, liked, I love that you started drinking again. I remember when you didn't drink and I was nah, like, I it bums me out when people don't drink. I want to drink more, but I don't want to be too drunk for something's burning. Oh, don't worry. Well, we'll we can wrap this up soon. How long have we been going, Halston? I have to piss so bad. What? 
Two and a half hours. Good show. Oh, we it's got fucking, it. <laughs> we got it's it. It's always weird how on these things. You Josh Adam Myers just texted like me. Game. Just texted the group. Second degree burn on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Text Josh Adam Myers and say, "Do you owe Burt money?" <laughs> I will right now. I did his show and he was like, I, I'm, "I don't, I don't understand the whole <laughs> phone money thing." He's like, "Do you have?" Uh, Venmap or whatever. He goes, hey guys, can you not post the video of the coffee spilling on me yet? I have a lawsuit. Second degree burn on my <laughs> No. Leg. Tell him send pics. Tell him send FaceTime him right now. FaceTime him right now. I want to see the pictures. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What happened to him? I wasn't there. So, uh, I'll tell you, so we, Josh, me, Paco, and uh, Lewis were, did the shows in, You're in Boston. Connecticut and Boston. And like, so we were driving home. We were podcasting from the car. And we pulled up to a McDonald's drive through to get this is on the and podcast. And, and Lewis was fading, so we were getting Lewis coffee on the podcast. We were already podcasting for a couple minutes, and we pulled up to the drive through. And Lewis goes, "Oh, interview the drive through lady." And I go, "You know, that's not my steez." I'm like, "No, no, no." Josh <laughs> goes, "I'll, I'll do, do it." Josh goes, "I'll do it." So we pull up. So the back window is in front of the drive through, and she hands him Lewis's coffee, <laughs> and he gets off here and goes, goes, "Thank you, sir." Ah! And he's just, yeah, he's, yeah. he's all up in his seat and everything. And Where are you from? <laughs> it's so hot. Ah, ooh, ah, oh. It was, uh, and dude, he just screamed, and we laughed so. I mean, I was, my face was hurting. Dude, the woman, it was a great day the, of follies. Lewis the fell on the, on the street earlier that day, which was also just a walking. good chuckle. Just walking, just kicked the curb, and just, just fucking fell rolled over. into it. Oh. oh, it was so great. But that's not oh, okay. We got, we got, hold on, hold on. We had the fucking, we were watching in Greece, they do a changing of the guard. I, I put this on my Instagram. I don't know if you're going to be able to find it, Halston. It was the hardest we've laughed. They're doing the changing of the guard where they do fancy steps, where they go like, <laughs> their foot goes up, walks it, dune. And it's super slow. It's super slow. And as they're doing it, an old man is sprinting in front of them and trips and falls for like <laughs> fucking five minutes. And we were crying laughing. Oh, we should show Bert to the fucking. Oh, that guy? Yeah, yeah. please send it to What's him. That? Yeah. It's one so of the say, funniest. Say, 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 if you look up, Chicago comedian falls off stage first. Thing. Oh, dude, 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 dude. Wait, hold on. What's his name? Let's see. It's right. There. It's the first thing. It's first thing. Yeah, yeah. No, first not thing. Heather McDonald. Yep. Okay. Heather McDonald. James right. Austin Black. It's this. Yeah, this guy. So funny. The page, as I let you know, like having little adventures with some freaky Chicago girls. And I've come to the realization, I've been talking to one, that I don't think pegging is necessarily that gay. <laughs> 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 I've watched it ten times. It's never not funny. <laughs> <laughs> That is, that is his Led Zeppelin 4. And he can do that 10 more times. I guess you can see it from the beginning. I've been talking about that. I don't think pegging is necessarily that gay. <laughs> the thud. I don't think it's that gay. with some uh, freaky Chicago girls. Uh, and I've come to the realization uh, I've been talking to one that I don't think pegging is necessarily that gay. Uh, <laughs> dude, by the end of the word gay, he knows he's eating shit. Uh, I, uh, the timing. Uh, the timing is fucking perfect. What a uh, line. What a oh line to fall off and not get to resolve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he goes, I don't that. think pegging is that gay. Good night, everybody. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's it's a line that your next oh. line is supposed to be. Now hear me oh, out. Hear me oh, out. Fuck me. Oh, that's the fucking. Uh, that is the funny. Uh, what's the kid's name? What's that kid's name? Uh, they ju I just said it. It was <sighs> they pulled it up in the oh. video. Oh, the fucking. <laughs> uh, let's see. What's the kid's name? Oh, what's his name? Said it right there. I'm uh, following him. Oh my god. Oh, maybe he doesn't say it. He'll never. No, be they said on the last. Man. Go back. That's, that's, go, that's go, the funniest thing I've ever seen. If you go seen. back a tab, it says it uh, right there. James Austin oh. Black. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. That's the fucking. 
That's the funniest thing I've ever. Is it is it is it real or no? Is is it fake? Oh my god! It's it's if it's fake, then he's fucking brilliant. No, it's not fake. He really nailed it. If it's fake. If yeah. he, if it's fake, I'll hire him to I'll hire him to do <laughs> one minute every show. <laughs> He'll do 17 seconds at every the beginning of every one of my shows, but change it up and I'll be crying laughing on the sentence. He could do he could do four minutes and just keep going with the sentence and you're waiting for it. You're waiting for it. And he gets close to the edge of the stage. He's like, here's my thoughts on the Holocaust. He gets right by the edge of the stage. He's like, ah, never mind. Let's pivot. I'm gonna do a little crowd work. What's his name? James Austin Black. Oh, that no, that's real. He's only got 945 followers. Yeah, yeah, it's that's real. fucking real. Oh my god, I'm following him right now. James Austin Black. Holy James shit, dude. Austin. He by the way, by the way, way he he yeah, here's why it's real. It. Yeah, here's why it's real. It's not posted on yeah, his thing. He at hates all. it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh I like I broke my collarbone, dude. That is the greatest bit of content. What is this? What is this orangutan bit? I want to know if he's stepping on my toes. James Austin Black. That's not on his Instagram. No way. Nope. He doesn't have it. Oh, because this fucking kid. That's how real it is. Oh, I want to hear the end of the joke. That rules, dude. That's the best way to end this podcast. Fuck. <laughs> Guys. I mean, I've watched it. It's it's it'll never not be funny. Oh, I could I could watch that. I could watch. Hey, do you, hey, do you have the Weezer clip, Halston? This this podcast, this one thing made me laugh so fucking hard. Have you ever heard the seen the high school band playing Weezer? Oh no, dude. Did I? Oh, I hilarious. think I should. Yeah, I think yeah. So. This is this made me laugh so fucking hard. <laughs> Look at him! Like, ah, ah, what's his guitar down? Oh no! <laughs> Look at him! He's just like, ah. no idea what to do. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Wait, can I see that Jay Austin's back one more time? That's the funniest thing. That's that, that has to be staged. It's so fucking funny. It's the perfect sentence to say before you fall off a stage that is the yeah, fucking I mean if you really think about it Peggy's not that gay I've been thinking Peggy's over there like, yo but the, uh, but the way he says gay goes gay uh, and his outfit like his outfit <laughs> is it so perfect oh yeah a lot of sexual escapades as I like you know like having a little adventures I like so. this is Chicago girls and I've come to the realization I've been talking to one that I don't think pegging is necessarily that gay <laughs> <laughs> that gay <laughs> dude when he when he says the word pegging his foot is already over what he believes is stage <laughs> that gay it's just <laughs> uh, just that miss- is the best thing I've ever seen Missing the stage, like I've never. Oh, it, it took so long for him to fall. I thought he was hold up a sign that oh. said "uh oh." <laughs> well, dude, the Pablo, the Pablo oh. Francisco, when he falls too, and the guy's like, oh. "Why don't you go off stage?" He goes, "Excuse me, sir," with and he just fucking eats shit hard. Oh. Is oh. also great. I hope if uh, if I was that kid, I just say that I created that content. <laughs> just just like, come on. be like, yeah. Oh, he'll get exposed by the Chicago guys fast. Oh my god! All right, let's wrap this podcast up. We'll go meet, eat dinner. Love it. I'll oh, make yeah. you guys a great dinner. Uh, first podcast in the new studio. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I couldn't think of better guys to do it with. You oh, guys are fuck fucking yeah. hilarious. Love you, Bert. You guys are hilarious. I absolutely adore you guys. And uh, thank you. Uh, Stan Hope's coming over tomorrow night. I don't know if anyone wants to podcast with me. We're going to try as best yeah. we can for it. We have to. I, uh, uh, we got to see if we got time because we're doing a show at the comedy store. Oh, what time, what time is your show? Seven, I think. Start what time is Stan Hope coming over? Six. Oh, he is? Yeah. All right. Um, Stanhope usually rolls in with a fucking posse. So Stanhope's the man. Hopefully we get him at Skankfest this year. Yeah. Yeah. Has he not done one yet? He's done. He, he did it in, all, in Houston. He did it. And he, and he did one of the early He ones was like too. the fucking, like the band leader of Skankfest. Like we had face painters. He was like covered in clown makeup the whole time. Yeah. He had such a yeah, fucking boy, blast. Him and Bingo oh, came. They yeah. saved love it was it. awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. Yeah. Let's go eat dinner, guys. Thank love you. It. Hell right, yeah. You're the man. Love you guys. 